Okay. Welcome back, everybody, to A Class of Crows. Feels like it's been like a year, to be honest. I don't know why, but yeah. it feels really long. It does. Um, previously, on A Class of Crows, the party was uh, semi-lost in a dungeon called The Path Below. Uh, it's still technically there. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Um, they were uh, led astray by some giant spiders and then captured to be eaten alive later. And were assisted by a mysterious man in rusted, uh, dirty armor who helped them out. Uh, they gathered the rest of their party, freeing them from the spiders' cocoons. And then... Attempted to make their way back out, um, which they began to realize was going to be quite difficult, and uh, <laughs> desperation set in. There was some uh, infighting amongst the group, <laughs> and uh, eventually Professor Nightingale came up with a plan uh, that he was not too fond of, but put into action anyway, as it seemed to be the only option in which he cast reverse gravity on his students and then feather fall to allow them to float back up the shaft that they came down and arrive in this room. Uh, and he planned to leave himself behind uh, as feather fall only affects five people and there were five students that he wanted to protect. Uh, but in a time of crisis, uh, Croak managed to awaken something within himself and cast feather fall on the two that were remaining down there as well allowing them to follow the party back up and thus saving them from a spidery fate deep down in the path below uh, so we left off last session with our party just arriving right back in the uh, pit cave where they fought the spiders originally so let's get uh, there we go let's get ambiance back So your feet touch down after uh, Featherfall begins to wear off and you leave the gravity field. Back on solid ground. And as you look around, you realize you are back in that room where you first fought those spiders. You can actually see the corpse of one that you slayed uh, lying there, motionless. Uh, Croak will take out his longsword and stab the spider in the abdomen, just for good measure. <laughs> Wouldn't be Croak if you didn't do that. Yeah. I want to um, take a little bit of its like venom or something and put it in a vial. Yeah, you can see that same kind of green fluid dripping from its jaws. Okay, well I'm gonna take some and put it in a vial. To smoke later? Maybe. <laughs> Please don't. Alright. Um, all right, so you take a small little vial of this uh, liquid. It uh, is kind of thick and viscous. Ooh, gross. Killian looks around for her dagger that she threw at it. Yeah, it was somewhere over here, maybe. I forget where you threw it. Maybe it was over here. <laughs> I don't remember where, but uh, you eventually find it, we'll say. This is not too many other things littering the floor in here. Uh, it has, however, gotten significantly darker. I forget if you had any sp uh, light spells active when you flew up. Uh, am I still no? Because Kenro, Kenro, did you give me light on my shoulder? Is that still active? I can't. No, remember. I turned. You told me to turn it off, so I, I believe did. you turned it off. Yeah, but we were. Hey, you know what, guys? Uh, I got this. Um. <clears throat> I, I got this, and uh, Kenrod's going to uh, clap his hands together and start making hand signs, and uh, then he's going to uh, he's going to grab a rock on the ground and cast light on it, and then toss it to uh, to uh, um, Croak. All right. Uh, then, with the illumination from that light spell, Killian, you have an easier time finding your dagger and manage to grab it. Oh yeah. I forgot, I have a fucking my crossbows uh, over here. You like? I appreciate it for the like, Ken Rope. Uh, uh, yeah, your crossbow is laying where you uh, threw it on the ground before uh, running off. Nice. 
Yeah, I think it was like somewhere over here or something. Uh, Professor. Uh, Professor Nightingale looks pretty exhausted. He's used up all of his spell slots at this point. Um, so he looks pretty all tired. All one of his spells? Uh, Professor, you seem a bit tired. Uh, <laughs> would you recommend that we leave the path below and ensure that it is secured? I, I think we've all had enough of this place for, for today. Mm, indeed. I suppose we will have to... Uh, secure these areas uh, such as that that we haven't been to on this level at another day it seems wise to uh, try to take the path of least resistance out of here hmm. indeed well if everyone is done should we uh, continue back to where we came from yes Killian's gonna rush towards the hallway. Oh, uh, Killian, before you get too far ahead, uh, Croak will hand Killian uh, his dagger. Oh, sweet, one for each hand now. Yes, I just thought you might be able to use an extra weapon. Young Gilder, are you coming too? Yep, I'm on my way. He's gonna kind of meander and look around for more stuff to hold on to. Alright, you uh, slowly make your way back down that corridor um, to that central room that you've been to before. Uh, before we go back up the ladder, I wanted to do one thing. Now's not the time to poop. <laughs> I wouldn't do that in front of you all anyway. <laughs> I have to remove my armor for that, yeah. Alright. Uh, I'll take uh, one of the pickaxes that uh, I grabbed and mine out some of this crystal. Okay. Um, how much are you trying to mine out? Like just break uh, a break a small piece off, or like a larger chunk, or what are you trying to do? I want to get a chunk. All right, like a fist size or larger than that? Probably like fist size, yeah. Just just a decent chunk. I mean, you said these pickaxes are pretty much rotted, and they got like one use in them. And I got two, so yeah, they're quite old. Um, whatever I can get with like two swings, basically. All right. Um. Without too much difficulty, you swing the pickaxe and uh, can break off about a fist-sized chunk of it just off the end of that crystal there. Um, and as you do that, you see that the kind of the spot left behind, um, sort of the surface where uh, you broke a piece off of, it glows bright white for a sec and then fades back to the blue color of the crystal. Hmm. Um. Can I like Arcana check that or something to see if I know what that might do, or go ahead. Would I just not know? Go ahead, you said. Yep, go ahead. Okay. Uh, nineteen. Um, check Discord. All right. Uh, don't say the result out loud, just type it to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oof. Alright. Okay. Um, you feel like there's like almost like a humming in the air after you break it off. And then that slowly fades. Uh, none of the others, you do not hear any humming. All right. You hold I'll... in your hand a small blue fist-sized chunk of crystal. Um, it's fairly clear. You can see almost through it, but it is uh, tinted blue. Okay. Uh, I'll stick it in my backpack and just kind of slowly back up while trying to keep an eye around me. 
Uh, we should get going. Alright, guys, cheese Agreed. it. <laughs> Alright, the ladder still sits central in the room, so you can climb your way back up that ladder, which takes a while and it's fairly dark for those who can't see and those who don't have the stone of light, but, um,. Uh, those with dark vision, you can kind of see the edges of the uh, cavern, the cavern wall as you climb. And eventually make it. Back to the top, and you recognize the room that you're standing in, as you've been there before. Uh, I will consult my map. Uh, to which exit leads to, um, or which tunnel leads to the first ward room, I believe. What, wasn't it this one? Yeah, it's ward one, two, three, four, numbered across on the map. Okay. Um, so I gotta, uh, well, I guess I can ask you first. Um, should we go ahead and leave, or should we investigate Big Site B? that we never checked earlier. It was the place where the three uh, mushroom enemies came from. Uh, Professor Nightingale says mushrooms? What mu uh, indeed, there were some myconid creatures that we fought. Well, more uh, than... I, I saw the swallow group, but more than that. Uh, indeed, there were three larger ones. Um, one different than the other two. Uh, Tom pipes up. Uh, Mike and it's, uh, it shouldn't be this far up. We could uh, take a look. What do you think, Professor? Do you think it would be too dangerous, or that we should check out the dig site B? Uh, I suppose we could give it a look, but um, I do recommend that we make haste on out of here, as I'm sure we're all quite exhausted. Certainly. Uh, I believe we'll just take a quick peek and then head for the exit. All right. Uh, so going by my map, it would be this way. Yeah. All right. I'll head forward then. So you head down that uh, tighter corridor for a little bit and eventually arrive back at Ward 4. Uh, the uh, the steel gate that was sitting there is still um, how you left it when you entered. I forget if you like closed it or not, but oh, it's been like a month, man. <laughs> I don't remember. Me neither. We'll say that you just kind of closed it nicely. You didn't like. You don't have any means to lock it again, but you just kind of let it shut. Yeah, last one in closes it back. So inside this uh, larger room, you can still see uh, the corpses of several myconids that you sl you've uh, slayed before you headed off to floor two. Uh, these were the myconids I mentioned, Professor Nightingale. Uh, Tom pokes around them a little bit, kind of investigating them. Marking it wizards, huh? Never seen them yeah. this. F never seen them this far up. These ones, they cast spells at you. Indeed, and there was one more, but Gilly's acid destroyed it. What did that one look like? Uh, I believe he was purple and a bit longer and stringier than the rounded ones. Hmm, did he try to punch you and stuff? Oh god, I can't remember what he did. He cast like magic stone or something? Uh, the like wizard stone. cast magic stone. The purple one just threw it. Okay. Uh, but he did try to punch you, yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Call those ones bruises. Mm, understood. I've never seen them this far up before. Could it be just because the ward was uh, not active, or 
would it be something else possibly could be i can't say i know too much about these wards here but um, usually they like to uh hang out where the the wet caves are like the moisture hmm, interesting you said they came from this direction then indeed that is uh dig site b on the map that i acquired all right are you heading that direction to check it out then uh croak is um uh, everyone else is up the run Kalian will follow you can't see so stay with the light <laughs> even though you want to leave really badly just move the dead bodies out of the way You head down this cavern, the walls are kind of wetter. Um, you can see sort of roots growing from in between the stones on the ground as you walk down this path. Uh, I'll drag y'all in. Uh, the room before you as you enter um, seems some sort of overgrown with various foliage, massive mushrooms. Mushrooms are good for smoking. Yeah, Gilly can't resist and he just starts picking up little samples. <laughs> I'd like to see what's on this table. Uh, it's various research notes um, about this cave that you're standing in right now. Um, but from what you gather from these research notes, they don't mention anything about mushrooms. Hmm. Theophilius approaches from behind you and says, "Last that I visited, last that I visited this cavern, there weren't mushrooms like this." This is uh, new, I imagine. I see. What's this blue stuff? Water. Oh. Guys, there's water over here. My socks are wet. <laughs> there's sort of like a puddle forming in the corner of the room. Hey, I'm bored. Is there anything we can fight in here? <laughs> inner demons. <laughs> I do uh, have I do have an ancient devil residing inside of me. There you go. What are you talking about? Don't worry about it. Uh, can okay. I tell where the water's coming from? Like a crack or something? Oh, Kenro. And if so, does it look like it's newly formed? Uh, there isn't particularly a crack. It's sort of a rough wall, but um, there is water sort of dripping down the wall. Okay. And forming a puddle in the ground. Um, I'll point that out to Tom, I suppose, and Professor Nightingale, because Tom had mentioned you know, like the moisture, I think, or Nightingale did one of them. Yeah, well, I reckon this is why they uh, took a look into this cavern, but um, again, I've never seen Mushrooms like this uh, grow this far up, usually much deeper down. I appreciate your insight, Tom. How does it smell in here? Uh, musty and like uh, like how it smells after it rains, sort of. Hmm. Petrichor, is that what it's called? Yeah. I don't think we have anything that would like be able to seal that up. So seal what up? Uh, the water source over here. I can freeze it. Do you have any like earth stuff that could yeah. seal? Yeah. Mold earth. There is kind of some looser dirt in this cavern. Um, part of it is stone, uh, with roots kind of growing out through it, but there are, is some earth kind of showing in between those rocks. 
Yo, would you mind attempting to seal this up just in case that is the source of some of these myconids? I'll certainly attempt. And I'm Much appreciated. To mold earth. Only works in, it works in a five foot cube, so I don't know how big the area is. Um, it's it's not huge. There's like sort of a smallish puddle. Um, and you can kind of move uh, like a block of dirt from here and um, sort of pack it against the wall if that's what you're trying to do. Yeah. Will that actually hold after, I'm, after I've done it? Uh, with the moisture, I would say it kind of turns to more muddy earth and will kind of stick to the wall. Okay. Yeah, I'll try and cover it up as much as I can with the surrounding dirt from the ground, I guess. Alright, uh, you try to pack the dirt sort of around where you can see these drips are coming from. Just sort of like smaller cracks in the wall. There's no like large crack, but there's just sort of smaller openings. Gotcha. And you pack the dirt as tightly as you can along there. Uh, from what you can tell, the dripping has sort of started to cease. Hmm. Yeah, I do not know if that will have an effect, but... I appreciate your assistance, yeah. No problem. You know what? Can I freeze that water for... It only lasts an hour, but, you know. Yeah, you can freeze the puddle. Just it's a, it's not that much water, so I'd say you could just freeze all of it. Okay, cool. Uh. Just for a little extra added comfort. Yeah, fuck that puddle up. <laughs> Makes me feel better. <laughs> Alright, the, uh, the puddle kind of frosts over and hardens. Uh, anything on these stones and runes or anything? No, they just sort of are a collapsed part of the wall, maybe falling off the ceiling. Can't really tell. Uh, the mushrooms are sort of like a reddish hue with small white spots. There's another type as well. It's a thinner cap to it and is whitish and brown. How Got anything good, Kaylee? Um, I don't know. I'm going to dry them first before... Um smoking them so are you be a minute. cutting a piece off of it then yeah right. I, I went around the whole room and cut up a little bit of each of the plants I found and then I labeled them all and then I put them in my satchel okay. yeah he's very meticulous about um, labeling all of his stuff Because he, he wants to be able to know what he's smoking, kind of. So he can go back and find more? Yeah, if he, yeah, if he, if it ends up being okay. <laughs> I've certainly satisfied my curiosity here. Uh, if anyone else has anything they want to do. Nope, let's go. Best possible. Yeah, we should leave. Oh, wait, I can't see. I gotta wait for my guy. Light <laughs> That's cool. Well. We got tw 20 feet of dim light around me, so you can head a little bit further yep. ahead. Oh, okay. Alright, you make your way back to Ward 4. Uh, the, the ward itself, I should say, is still dim. Um, oh. not It's not glowing, as nobody's done anything to remedy that. Should we fix this? Uh, I don't know if we're able to. Professor Nightingale was the one working on the wards. I suppose we could give it a try. Well, seeing as my magical uh, capabilities are tapped for the day, I believe we'll have to return to fix this. Some of the teachers will accompany me. Understood. Let's hope no one else wanders down here. Yeah. In the meantime. Uh, I assume the last person that went through that gate just closed it. I mean, I don't have a lock or anything, but it should be closed. Yeah, sure, we'll say that then. Oh, thank you for flipping me. 
been walking I had that backwards. capability, I'd be flipping all over the place. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Uh, so, you see the glow of the third ward off ahead of you as you head into this cavern. Uh, nothing seems to have changed in this room. It is how you left it. Just gonna keep on moving. Yeah, Yogg's walking at a fairly br brisk pace. I'm ready to be done with detention. <laughs> Little crow keeps turning around in each room. He's just paranoid about <laughs> what I found earlier down below. <laughs> God. None of us have any idea. This is a terrible detention. Yeah, not a good first cave experience. All right, uh, you find yourself back in that first cave that you entered the path below in. Uh, the elevator still sits where you left it. Do we all fit on this elevator? <laughs> mm, probably not, but uh, for the ease of not having to do multiple trips, we'll say you can all squish it. <laughs> <laughs> Move your fat ass over. <laughs> Killian sits on Yo's shoulders. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah if, uh, if you and Ken about stack, you can be one person. <laughs> <laughs> We take up one block together. <laughs> like two kids in a trench coat trying to get into a room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright, uh, then Theophilus... Looks like we're leaving, looks like we're leaving the professor, bye. <laughs> Theophilus pulls a lever and then steps into the elevator. And, uh, oh. with a lurch it begins to, uh clank its way back up. You can hear sort of the grinding of gears and uh, the pull of rope as you slowly begin your ascent back up out of the cavern. And well, um, so we're what? certainly not leaving the professor, Ken wrote, but it appears that you left something behind. <laughs> hmm? Uh, Croak looks at an armorless tin right in front of him. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's it's in my inventory. Probably I on like you I... specified that. I mean, I said I was unequipping it. I would just assume that I would be putting it in my inventory. I didn't know I needed to specify that I wasn't putting it on the ground. <laughs> I, I just remember the ninja. I remember the ninja nah, just stripping did. it all off. I don't remember the ninja <laughs> taking it all with him. It's quite heavy to carry a bunch of armor in your backpack. I mean, it's the same weight as carrying it on my person. Does it really change if it's in my backpack? I mean, whatever it you're doesn't the GM, change, I'm... change the weight, but um, I don't recall you stuffing it in your backpack. I again, I just I'm, I that seems like a given. That seems like kind of nitpicky, but whatever. <laughs> I mean, if, if, if it's gone, it's gone. Uh, I just don't know that maybe the ninja would want to bring it with him. Because the ninja didn't seem too enticed by the idea of armor. So, that's that's the issue with for me, is that I find... I guess I don't, I guess I don't have a shield and armor anymore. <laughs> don't worry, Killian will probably give you her shield. <laughs> Gotta be careful about where you're leaving. <laughs> Killian seems to be very eager to just get rid of her shield. <laughs> yeah. Armorless, armorless life is where it's at anyway. I mean, do I have it or do I not? Because I mean, I'm gonna say no. Uh, simply okay, because of the that's... ninja's personality. Fun. <laughs> cool. I guess I got rid of all my weapons too. Then. Um. So I have no weapons, already... no armor, no shield. Those were already. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't have picked up my crossbow. <clears throat> well, you said you picked up your crossbow. Wait. Just said that my personality said I wouldn't. But you did do it. Uh, I, I, I meant back in I, back when you took it off. You never arm... specified taking it with you. You just said I strip it off. 
So I'm just going by Again, what you Again, I kind of assumed I would be putting it in my person. But you didn't specify that you did that, did you? I didn't know I was supposed to specify that. I, I mean, it's armor, so stuffing it in a backpack is rather difficult. Um, it's not like sheathing a sword. Um, so I would rather you specify that. Um, carrying it with you is fine, but it's pretty heavy and not exactly the easiest thing to take with you. Sure, then. I threw away my armor. Where was it left? I don't know. Uh, I think you took it off in the puzzle room. Oof. I go back and get it. Well, you can jump off the elevator that's moving up, I guess. Yeah, yep, I'll make an acrobatics. I'll make an athletics check. Go ahead. Or acrobatics, or whatever yeah. it is. If you want to. Wait. I thought it was athletics. Wait, it's athletics or acrobatics? It's just a jump. There's no check. You're just hopping off an elevator. Oh, uh, well, how high up am I? Uh, it's already moving up. What's I don't know. D6 per, what, 10 or 20 feet of fall damage? I'd say we're going to be. Uh, Alright, cool. Well, I jump off. Okay. Be right back, guys. I forgot something. The ninja would probably be athletic enough to make that fall, right? I don't know. Those are my roles. They're pretty shitty. Um. <laughs> Alright. Uh, yeah, I'm running back to go get it. Uh, well, you're heading I the wrong way. Don't know how you're going to make it back. I'll See? figure it out. Okay. Um. I guess we'll handle that later then. Okay. Because uh, the rest of you are still clunking away. Back up the elevator. Don't get lost down there. And he goes, I have an innate sense of direction. Probably not, whatever. Mm. Alright, uh, so as you all head back up the elevator, you, um, Eventually, from above you, you can see this kind of still dark above you. You can't see the sunlight. Um, but you do hear a voice call from above as you near the uh, top of the elevator. And the voice says, Hey, Captain, elevator's heading up. And before too long, the elevator sort of lurches to a rest back at the base camp where you first entered. Ooh. Oh, hang on, let me drag you in. God, we're out of there. Yeah, remind me never to punch somebody at school again. <laughs> <laughs> this detention really did its job. Yeah, I sure taught me a lesson. <laughs> we all walk uh, out with PTSD. Before you, it, it is currently nighttime. Before you, you can see two torches uh, burning that have been kind of placed there since you, uh, since you uh, went down. They were not there when you entered the path below. And you can see a half-orc man standing before you. Uh, he has a bow and arrow across his back. And he has sort of a bewildered look on his face. Do not go down there. Crook will give him the salute. <laughs> um, he kind of nods at your salute and says, Well, I didn't think you'd be... Coming back to us, thought we would have had to go in there to get you. Uh, well, you almost would have if it were not for Killian and uh, our friend Tom over there. And Kirk will point at Tom. Yeah, Tom's a great guy. Um, you see his eyes kind of scan across you, and as he does, another 
person sort of walks up to the group out of a tent. Um, she's a purple-skinned tiefling woman with horns that curl back behind her head. Um, and then the orc says, he, he kind of, you see him like point at each of you kind of and mouth something as he sort of counts you all. Um, he stops and looks at Professor Nightingale and says, you're the professor then, and one, two, three, four. And then he kind of looks at the at Tom and says, but you're not a student. And Tom goes, no, I'm not a student. Uh, there were supposed to be five of you. Five and a professor. Uh, yes, well, our dwarven friend left his armor down below and he decided to go get it. Uh, oh, oh, all right. Indeed. So what is your name, by the way? I am Croak. Hmm, I'm uh, I'm Elcor. I'm with the Rangers, the uh, Larethian Division. Oh, the Rangers! I have the utmost respect for your organization. Uh, as he says that, he sort of makes a little motion towards uh, his belt, where he has a small silver uh, badge pinned to it, uh, with a uh, what looks to be sort of a compass star on it. Uh, here, I'm going to go. There you go. Uh, and he says, well, we were hired to uh, find you guys down here after you went missing. By who? By the school. We got oh, a... Uh, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> we got a message from your from your headmaster. And he said uh, that we had to head down and start looking for you. We've uh, been down there several times, but we haven't found you yet. And lo and behold, you just waltz right back up to us. Yeah, we got kind of wrapped up down there. Um, as Elcor is talking, the woman is just kind of like walking around you. In turn, each of you... And looking you over. Um, she kind of is tilting her head back and forth. Scrutinizing each of you. Any injuries? I'm fine. Uh, I am fine as well. Uh, refresh my memory. Are you guys fine because you leveled up? Or fine because you short rested? I forget. I'm fine. We short rested. Short rested. I'm fucked yeah. yeah. Because <laughs> I, I know that. No. It, yeah, I know that it um, heals you automatically when you level up so wait are we level three or level four You're level three three okay cool i did level up i guess i was full nice. from the short rest for sure i remember me and croak were, i believe were definitely... yeah i remember some of you guys burning your yeah. hit dice but i don't remember which one of you did is anybody still actually injured because i don't know that the my hit uh point values that i can see for you guys is necessarily accurate gotcha um yeah i did I... use mine yeah. I used two hit dice to heal the full, and then I leveled up, so the full just stayed full in the level up. Um, the woman says, well, uh, it's good that nobody's injured. Best let Arthur take a look at you anyway. Um, and by now, another figure. Hold on, let me go. I think Professor Nightingale might be the only one that's actually injured here, because mm -hmm. I think he was still oh, yeah. slightly <laughs> wounded. Uh, best let the lot of you get examined by Arthur anyway, uh, just in case. Uh, you all do still have that lingering tingling in your hands, to remind you. Mm. Oh, okay. From the venom or whatever. Correct. Um, out of one of the tents appears another woman. Uh, she has sort of uh, somewhere in between blonde and bright white hair. And several very obvious scars that lie in her face. Um, she kind of looks you up and down and says, Elko, Elko, what's going on? Uh, she's sort of like rubbing sleep out of her eyes. Um, and Elko explains, uh, well, I just heard the, the elevator moving, went to investigate, and they just showed up. 
I don't know how to explain it other than that. Um, and she says, uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, there's a professor and four students. And are you a student? And uh, no, no, I'm not a student, says Tom. And they do the same kind of thing where they're uh, looking for the missing person. And I say, uh, still one missing then. He needed his armor. We're school students. We can't leave that shit around. We can't afford more. Uh, I suppose I understand. Uh, Crook will salute the new woman approaching. Uh, she, she gives you a nod, but doesn't salute back. Uh, um, your commotion has kind of drawn the attention of a couple other people in the camp who are sort of just kind of looking on. Uh, you can see a woman with uh, short, dark hair and uh, dark robes with feathers watching you. Um, and another woman with a large great sword strapped to her back and an eye patch. Um, and the woman says, well, I'm Captain Lavender Ravel of the uh, Lyrethian Division of the Rangers. Uh, we were hired to look for you, but uh, I guess we found you. Well, there is still one of us down there, but uh, the rest of us are safe. Um, Captain Lavender, you mentioned. Uh, mm -hmm. We met a woman named Cloverly uh, on our way to the Everest Forest uh, about a week ago. Um, no. I trust that she found you? That week ago, no. That, that doesn't line up. Are you saying that out of character? I thought that was last weekend. No, she's saying, saying that in, in character. Wait. How long were we down there? How long were we missing for? Uh, just over a month. What? Whoa. What? Oh, no. Mm -hmm. yeah, really? You've been, you've been gone for more than a month now. We've visited the dungeon and delved down there several times and haven't found any trace of you lot. Where, where exactly were you? Um... No idea. That's a good question. We were um, pretty far down, but we were only down there for, what, a day? I thought it was a day. Yeah. As the other uh, members of this uh, ranger division begin to gather, you can see that they actually have bandages and injuries that are all wrapped up. Um, no, nah, we just for a day. No, uh, Chris going to take out the jerky from his backpack and look at it. What does it look like? It's hard and uh, rather old looking. Mm. Eat it. Mind blown. Can I have that, Croak? <laughs> uh, I don't believe even Esther would eat this, Killian, so you surely should not try it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, that doesn't have to stop you. <laughs> Can I have it? <laughs> sure. He'll hand over the nasty-ass jerky to Killian. Killian's gonna eat that nasty-ass jerky or attempt to bite it. It uh, crunches instead of uh, being soft. That is some aged jerky. You can gnaw on it. Yeah. Tastes so these like guys are all beat up looking, like bandaged, bandaged and stuff. Mm -hmm. They have kind of various wrapped and treated injuries. So you guys have been fighting stuff down there for a month We've, trying to find us? We've done several expeditions down into the uh, path below here, and we've not found a single trace of you. Well, even though you didn't mind uh, wind up Rescuing us, we I appreciate the effort. Yo, bow low. Indeed. Uh, well, looks like you I got saw, banged that's up. That's our job, so don't feel too guilty. But um, what 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 did you run into? Because we found uh, catacombs and wraiths and undead. What did what did you run into? Mm. Mushrooms spiders. and spiders, mostly spiders. Tom, Tom pipes in. Mockingbird spiders. 
<laughs> um, and Lavender says, uh, spiders? No, we didn't see any of those. And kind of looks across at the rest of her group who all similarly look confused. Uh, well, indeed. We were lured in by the mockingbird spiders. They were mimicking Professor Nightingale's voice. Uh, we fought them and defeated one, but were captured by the others and led further down into the path below. I see. Well, uh, I guess let's have Arthur take a look at you first. Um, uh, Connie, would you go with them and uh, tell, tell Arthur to inspect them? Uh, and the tiefling woman uh, nods her head and says, uh, yeah, sure. And sort of begins to kind of motion you guys to follow her. Yeah, we'll follow. Uh, she leads you over towards this tent here. The larger tent. Uh, as you walk away, uh, Professor Nightingale, who looks rather injured, goes as well. Um, but Tom says, uh, no, I'm fine. Uh, I'd rather talk to you guys a little bit about what you saw down there. Uh, and so Tom stays behind. Um, so mysterious. And Lavender, Lavender sort of looks at uh, this woman here. And says, uh, Nordica, can you wake Tunic and have him send a message to the school? Uh, we need to inform the headmaster. And the uh, eyepatch woman nods and heads towards one of the tents as you guys follow the tiefling woman towards this tent. So, uh, as you enter this tent, it seems to have been kind of almost repurposed. You can see sort of several makeshift uh, beds have been set up, and it seems like a table's been dragged into the center. Oh, sorry, got rid of him. Oh, you guys, <laughs> are you guys on the wrong plane? I uh, see my portrait, but I can't click it. That may be a roll 20 thing. You guys might yep, be on the wrong. You were on the wrong plane of existence. Mm -hmm. yep, there we go. Story of my life. <laughs> Bring you back to the token dimension. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a button too. Okay. Uh, so before you, uh, you can see. Oh, see if there's just uh, join us, Theo. There we go. I want to also do, can I look and see if the plants that I have are still okay or if they like aged or something? Uh, they seem they... drier. Cool. That saves you the trouble of having to dry them yourself. Yeah. Radical. Um, within this tent you can see uh, a man who's sort of preoccupied but looks up as you walk in. Um, he has sort of long swept back hair and wears uh, golden and red robes that are emblazoned with the sun. Uh, and most interestingly about him, he has uh, a symbol of a sun that seems to be sort of glowing on his forehead and his eyes glow the same shade of yellow. Uh, Killian looks, looks over the table and winks at him. <laughs> uh, he looks up and just says, oh, uh, and then looks towards uh, the tiefling woman and says, are these the students we were supposed to find? Did you guys do an expedition without me? And uh, the tiefling woman says, uh, no, Arthur, they showed up in the middle of the night, to be honest. And he says, ah, well, let's take a look at you lot. And he stands up. Uh, have, a, have a seat then. And he looks towards all of you. motions for you to take a seat at uh, one of the stools at this table. I like that Yo just went mm. for the croak was going for. <laughs> I did like the uh, cop so move where they, yeah, where they do a little thing over the hood of the car, except I did it over the table. <laughs> just like in class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so the man, Arthur, who they're referring to, um, looks you up and down and says, uh, 
Any injuries then? Uh, what what do you have to report? Um, no injuries here. On Just my part. Tingliness from the uh, spider venom, whatever it was. Mm. Yes, yeah, just that. Spider venom. Uh, all right. Uh, well, just to be safe. How about this? Um, and he's going to cast. Uh, he's going to cast a mass healing word on all of you, at uh, fourth level. Uh, so he's going to heal everybody for eight, just to be safe. So if you have any, I don't know who has any health taken off, but if you do, you can heal. All right. Um, you feel sort of warmer, and the uh, the symbol on his forehead glows pretty brightly as he casts. Um, and then says, uh, now tell me more about this spider venom. Uh, what kind of sensation? You said a tingling? Yeah, uh, sort of a numbness as well hmm. right am i remembering that correctly yep okay. uh, i see it doesn't sound like your bog standard poison but i might be able to mix something up to fix that if you give me a moment um he looks over kind of he's he's in individually he's scrutinizing each of you Uh, and he kind of stops at Theophilius, and Theophilius sort of has that wound that's closed up a little bit, but still doesn't look too too nice. He says, "Ah, I suppose I'd get, I should get to you, uh, Connie. Is there anything you can do about the poison for now?" Uh, and then he's going to kind of escort Theophilius to lie down over here. I'm going to take out the small vial and say, would this be helpful? He, he He's almost like, uh, without looking, wrapping a bandage around Professor Nightingale. And he just kind of turns his head over his shoulder, uh, looking at the vial and says, mm, yeah, that might be of assistance in uh, whipping up an antidote for you lot. Uh, con confidence, can you take a look at it and maybe try to determine its origin? Uh, and he just kind of hands it to her. Okay, she's going to cast um, detect poison and disease on it. Here, let me give you some name tags. There we go. Um, and she says, "Ah, oh, this is no, this is no normal poison. Uh, what?" What effect did it have you? Did you feel the tingling immediately as it was injected into you? I don't believe we felt much as we were incapacitated at the time. It seemed to act as a preservative for the mockingbird spiders. Preservative? Mm hmm. I see. Uh, she's yeah, kind of. Only... Sorry. She's inspecting it and says, uh, I can see sort of properties of coagulation in it uh, they spit it or they they injected you with it or did this after you were already incapacitated they covered us in it after yes after incapacitating us <laughs> see uh she seems sort of almost excited as you talk about it oh fascinating fascinating so they they cover you with it and coagulate the wounds that they cause and then and then you said they, they captured you? Yeah, they wrapped us in web and took us down the shaft. That's interesting, interesting organism. So they attempted to capture you alive. They must prefer live meals, I suppose. Interesting. Uh, I think I can create an antidote with Arthur's help. Um, by now, Arthur has finished wrapping uh, Nightingale's wounds. And uh, he says, of course, yes, um, we should be able to fix this up in just a moment. Uh, you lot look pretty exhausted, though, so if you don't have anything else you want to ask us, maybe just take a rest. Uh, by morning, I'm sure your headmaster will have arrived. 
That sounds great. <laughs> Certainly. I feel like I'm forgetting something. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> mm, sure, it's nothing. There are several makeshift cots that are set up throughout the room that you can each pick from. Killian just face plants into this one, like her leg hanging off the side of it. He passes out. Uh, as you fall asleep, you can kind of hear the uh, grinding of a mortar and pestle as the two sort of whisper and talk about... Uh, how exactly to make a cure for this particular poison or an antidote? Uh, so it is already nighttime, but um, the rest of you will drift off. So let's, while we do that, let's go back to. All right, your feet hit. Okay, noises are back. Your feet hit the ground. Uh, luckily, you weren't too far up, so you do not take any damage. But uh, you do see the elevator continue to ascend above you. Kenro, aging Kenro. Huh? What's up? Ninja time. Oh, okay. Uh, I go back to the puzzle room. Uh, well, I can't take you there, but I can take you here. Are you gonna jump back down? You might not uh, even end up in the same place. Yeah, I guess this will be. This Kenro's gonna... death. It might be Kenro's death. I want that armor back. Um, is it like made out of jewels or something? No, I just don't feel like spending the money on it. It's literally just chain mail. Yeah, it's scale mail. Why don't you just beg uh, Gilly for mail, money? So even cheaper. All right. Do I have any rope? I don't know. I think I do. Cool, I'll spend eight hours here and get my spells back. Uh, so you're long resting? I might. Let me see what spells I have. Oh, I don't think I get uh, Featherfall. That sucks. What does that hat do? Does that hat give me Featherfall? Mm, you haven't attuned to it. So you're seriously going to be like, during that short rest, I just left the armor sitting there. Yeah. Duh. my spells figure out how I do this uh all right cool I want to look around for like rope or something I can use to climb down or a ladder or something uh, the only ladder that you recall seeing is the one back in uh, that room that you entered the second floor on um, I don't believe anyone left any ropes lying around so there should not be any I know there's that rope with the grappling hook up at the top. Okay. Okay, I'll go up and go get it. So you're leaving then? Yeah, I'll go all the way back up to the top where everyone else is so I can grab that rope with the grappling hook. Okay. I mean, 
yeah, so I guess that means I have to go all the way back, go up the elevator, grab the rope with the grappling hook, go all the way back down. Um, the elevator is at the top currently, but there's a lever. Okay, I pull the lever. Alright, uh, you hear sort of a loud clanking from above, and then spend the time waiting as the elevator eventually creaks to a stop in front of you. I hop on, and I flick the lever, and then I hop on. Then you spend some time waiting on the elevator and eventually arrive. Back at the top. Hey y'all, can't talk. I grab the rope and the grappling hook. I go back to the elevator and I press the lever and I go back down. Okay. You know what? No, I'm going to grab both of those because I, I feel like you're going to say it's not long enough. Are there any more over here? I want a perception. How much rope and grappling hook are here? Oh, yeah, that's fairly fun metagaming, but okay. I mean, I don't th Is it? It would be not metagaming if you said, I just want extra rope because I meant not be I long enough. But assuming that I would say it because it's my own motivation is metagaming, yeah. If the pit's deep then, I don't know, dude. Yeah, you can take the extra rope. I don't have any issue with that, but um, okay. these two are stepping in your way. Hey, excuse me, guys. Oh, I need hold to on, hold on, hold on. Nope. You're one of the students we're looking for. Why are you trying to go back Strength in there? Strength check. I'm pushing. I'm pushing past them. Okay, go for it. Strength check. I rolled an eleven. Okay. Um, Elcor rolled an eighteen, so he's stopping you. Um. Okay. Uh. You are grappled by Elcor. <sighs> so when he tries to grapple me, uh, yeah, he is he... grappling you. He didn't try. Oh, he doesn't have to make an attack roll. He rolled his grapple check, and he okay. Me. Well, does that count as an attack roll? No, he's not trying to hurt you. Uh, he's trying to stop you from going back in there. Is this considered an attack? No. He is physically trying to impose on me. I guess. Okay, I'm going to well, use warding. Attack, but he's I, trying to stop I, I, you from I, I'm, going I'm, I'm using warding flame uh, that imposes a divine light between myself and an attacking enemy. When you are attacked by a creature from 30 feet of you, you can see you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll, causing light to flare between the attacker before it hits or misses. An okay, it's not an attack roll. But he is attempting to he's get in my way. You. He's getting in your way, yes, but he didn't make any attack rolls, so... Well, then he, he just he he said he grappled grapple. me. He grappled you. It's not yeah, an attack that's, roll. that's an offensive action against me. It's not an attack roll. The specific wording there was attack roll, yeah? Uh, from behind you, you can hear Tom who says, uh, Hold on, little dwarf. What, uh, why the rush? I am going to get my armor. Uh, oh, right. Uh, is it really worth heading back in there? Yep. You seem to have quite a personal stake in this armor. I do. I see, but you don't think it's worth waiting? For? At least resting? You've been going all night, haven't you? Well, <sighs> I guess a month. Fine, I'll rest. I'm going back to get that armor. Well, if you do want to rest, we got uh, empty cots in the medical tent, says the uh, orc who's currently holding you. Sure. Yeah, he directs you towards the medical tent. Guess I go to the medical tent then. Okay. Let me stop this now. Oh, thank God. Uh, so as you enter Were the medical tent, you can see. Um, yeah, by now you probably would have okay. drifted off. 
uh, Killian definitely. Uh, I don't know about the rest of you, but um, you can see uh, the two of them, uh, two people who you don't recognize. You've never seen them before. Uh, just kind of quietly talking and working yep, over I some go herbs. right past them and go to the bed. Okay, fun. <laughs> All right, uh, so that's a long rest, so everybody can take their long rest then. Do you? Nice. Uh, so eventually you uh, awake in the morning feeling a little bit stiff from the uh, larger amount of adventuring you've done. In the past month, I suppose. And uh, you look around the tent. You can see the rest of um, who? Who? Uh, Croak will probably wake up first. Um, you can see the rest of your party. Some of them still sleeping. Uh, you don't see Arthur or Confidence in the tent. Uh. Brooke's going to go over and shake you awake. Gently. Yo, wake up. What is it? Uh, the rangers aren't here right now. Hmm. Perhaps they had other business. I don't know. I haven't been outside yet. Um, should we wake everyone else up? Or go check outside? They seem to be sleeping peacefully. Let's check outside. I'm okay. curious. They had a rough month, I guess, so might as well let them sleep. Alright. Indeed. Um, oh, hang on. Let me, uh... Let me click the lights on for ya. Click. Mm hmm Reduction value. Thank you, God. Did you see that, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> the sun rises so quickly that it blinds you. <laughs> um, you can kind of see as you where's the arrow? Uh, as you um, exit the tent and are sort of uh, have to adjust your eyes to the sunlight. Um, you can see the other rangers standing around talking, uh, and Tom is there as well. I'll walk up to him. Morning, Tom. I uh, didn't get a chance to thank you for saving all of our lives. So, thank you. Uh, it was Tom just foul, though. pure coincidence, to be honest, that I ran into you. But uh, happy I could help who I did. Uh, how are you feeling now, Tom, that you are out of the path below? Mm. Honestly... <laughs> A little confused. Uh, never seen a month. Well, you said a month went by. Uh, it's a little odd. I can't say I really know how long I've been down there, but um, now I'm starting to uh, worry. Hmm. Yes. Well, did your well. armor look like that when you first went down there? Uh, well, not quite this dirty, but um, it does have its fair share of dings and rust. Strange place. I agree. Well, what do you plan on doing now? That you're out. Well, to be honest, I don't really know. Um, I think I need to restock. So if you know anybody anywhere nearby to uh, do that, it's probably wise to uh, at least get myself a new sword. Uh, well, there is a blacksmith at the college, but uh. Um, Man, I can't remember if Arcanade had it. Had any like weapons dealers? I don't think they didn't. They did yeah. So Shamport. Yeah, Shamport would be the biggest city. Um, well, perhaps you could visit Shamport, or uh, if Professor Theophilius gives the go ahead, you might be able to come to our college as well. Uh, we have a resident blacksmith there. Hmm. I uh, I just might do that then, because uh. 
believe that's close by, right? Yeah, indeed. They were uh, just setting up last time I was there. The college near Levant was just setting up? Yeah. Oh, Tom. Oh. Tom. You poor man. What? Well, you're certainly in for a surprise when you arrive there. I don't know if it will be pleasant for you or unpleasant, but the school is fairly well established now. Really? You've been down there much longer than you know, Tom. Oh. Tom has always been a little bit odd for me, so I suppose I'm used to it. Hmm. Well, at any rate, I, I feel like the, the least the college could do for you saving five students is uh, give you some new equipment as repayment. Well, I suppose I'll have to talk to them then. Um, the other rangers kind of uh, pile out of their tent. And uh, Confidence, looking at the two of you, says, Oh, you're awake. Uh, Arthur and I, we uh, mixed up something that we think will work on your uh, little problem. And she kind of looks looks off to the side looking for Arthur, um, who, seeing you, uh, she waves him over. And uh, he pulls out of his robe a small little bottle of um, a uh, translucent uh, orange liquid. And says, I believe that this should help, so uh, give it a try. You should only really need a mouthful. Save some for your uh, friends. Are they still asleep? Yes, we left them to rest. Indeed. I'll uh, take a mouthful if he's offering it. Oh, uh, yeah, he hands you the bottle. Know. Okay. Yeah, take a swig, pass it to Croak. Uh, Croak will tilt back his helmet. Um, not off of his face, but just like tilt back his head and kind of pour it through the visor. Uh, as you drink it, you feel uh, warm inside and that feeling spreads from your throat as you drink it into your chest and then out to your extremities. And as it does, the tingling and the numbness begins to fade. Ooh, looks like it did the trick. Uh, he looks relieved and says... <laughs> All right, good. I was worried that wouldn't work. Uh, should we be worried about any side effects of this? Well, I don't believe so. I, I meant that I was just worried that uh, it wouldn't work at all. Oh, okay. Phew. Well, well, much appreciated, you. Arthur. Shouldn't um, have any nasty side effects. If you witness any, I suppose you can come back and talk to me. <laughs> oh, I definitely will. I'll send you a strongly worded letter. All right. <laughs> Let's uh, cross our fingers that that doesn't happen. Uh, that's an interesting marking on your forehead, Arthur. Uh, he's, he kind of like instinctively looks up at his own forehead, but can't really see anything. Um, he has similar markings along his eyes, as you can see. Um, and he says, ah, been with me all my life. Hmm. Interesting. It's, uh, Sun soul markings, as they call it. Side effect of uh, being born a sun soul, I guess. Hmm. Uh, what does a sun soul entail? <laughs> well, lots of people will tell you lots of different things, but um, from my perspective, it just means you were born uh, closer to Brava, I guess. A yeah. strong, a strong connection. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Croak's not interested anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps we should go wake the others and give them this concoction as well. Yeah, tell them uh, just a mouthful will do you. Indeed. I'm sure we'll be glad to have it. Yeah, Croak will salute Arthur, I guess, and then head off to the tent. Uh, most people here who you salute, they kind of give you a nod, but they don't salute back. It's okay. Um, mm -hmm. as, as though they recognize what you're doing, um, but 
don't actually salute you back. I don't ever expect to salute back, but it's always nice when it happens. I know. I, I, what I want to say is, yeah, I'm just trying to specify that they, they know your salute that you're doing. They recognize it. Um, yeah. But, but they aren't particularly, like, military, so they aren't saluting back. Right. I got you. That's kind of the feeling I wanted to give you. Uh, so you re-enter the medical tent. Um, I don't know if anyone else would have woken up by now, but you can say if you would. Killian's passed the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are our two heavy sleepers. Me too. Now, so. I'm sleep still sleeping. Man, I kind of feel bad waking people up, to be honest. Uh, well, yo, if you want to take the south, then I'll take the north. <laughs> Well, you got the medicine. Oh, well. Wait, how much did he give us? Just one vial? He gave you like a vial, but it's still pretty full. You just needed a little mouthful. In the morning, is it? Okay. Um, well, we'll just go around this way. Uh, Croak will kind of lightly shake Killian. Alright, Killian, ah, you feel what? somebody shaking your shoulder? Oh, what the hell do you want? Uh, apologies, Killian, but um, Arthur has concocted what may be uh, an anti-venom for your spider's poison. Uh, would you care to take a sip of it? Uh, sure. She, she'll sit up and take the vial and take one big gulp. Uh, easy there, Killian. We need some for the rest. This tastes weird. And she hands it back. Croak will accept the bottle back and move on to and Gilly. She'll, she'll get out of bed too, and yeah. Um, Croak's going to turn to look at Yo. Uh, Yo, would you mind doing this one? Okay, he'll kind of hold the bottle out to Yo. I guess. Look at Croak questioningly, but. I'll do it. Kirk backs up a few steps. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, shake Gilly awake. What? What's happening? Gilly, drink this strange substance. You'll feel Why? Better. It'll make you feel better. What is it? It's anti spider juice. Uh, uh, sure. Just one mouthful. Just, just one mouthful? Rest. Should I spit in it too? No, please don't. But what if my saliva makes it work better? It won't. I promise. How do you know? <laughs> the doctor told me. Am I sw Did you guys take some? Yes. Kirk nods. Um, Ken wrote and the professor still need to take it. So we're... Um... There's remnants of your saliva on this. <laughs> Backwash. Backwash. You want to think of it like that, sure. He he wait, he like takes um part of the bed's blanket and then cleans the top of it before taking a swig and giving it back. I'm a little offended, but okay, it's fine. Good morning to you too. And I'll uh, walk over to Kenro, shake him awake. Uh, sh sure, I'm awake. Uh, Kenro, take this. It's medicine. Make you feel okay. better. Just one Kenro mouthful. Takes it. All right. All right. Walk the, over uh, the tingling fades from your hands and feet. Feel better. Okay. Is he asking me? Yep. Yeah, I'm asking you. Sorry, I'm looking at you. Uh, trying yes. To... Alright, good. Last one. I'll shake the professor awake. Uh, he kind of... walk out of the tent and you just hear distant bagpipe playing. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, maybe I don't have to then. Uh, I'm while... going to go to Professor Nightingale. While, while I'm talking, uh, Killian, just make a performance check in the background. So we know the quality. Eight. Okay. Eight. All right. It's real. It's pretty rough today. Right. Sounds rough. like a uh, dying elephant. 
she so plays how she feels. Yo, you wake the professor up <laughs> and he kind of lets out a groan as he sits up and says, oh, yes, yes, what is it? Uh, the doctor concocted a uh, sort of a medicine for this, the venom or whatever. Uh, we have one more dose left and it's for you, so. Uh, I, I see. Um, he takes. Can, I, can I make? Can I make a? Uh, can I make a, uh, a? A check to grab that vial from Yo. Sure. Is that Dex? Sure. Slide of hand. Uh, slide, slide of hand for him. Yeah. All right. Uh, you don't grab it for the four. Mm. Professor Nightingale. Uh, but Yo, you are aware that he tried to grab it. Professor Nightingale. Since it was your negligence as an instructor to keep us safe, that was the direct result of the loss of my shield and armor, I think it only f prudent that you have the school's uh, smith produce new ones for me. I, I see. Uh, I don't recall when that was lost, but I suppose I could talk to it. Talk to the, I don't uh, recall when it was lost either, but it was lost, and it was after the spiders attacked us, so... I see. Now, he's taking a swig of the... Uh, he's taking a, he takes a swig of the medicine and hands it back to you, yo. Oh, so um, is there some left? There's actually, yeah, one more mouthful left in that. Oh, of course. I'll be right back. I'll run outside. Go to Tom. Right. Quite simply, I just want you to inform the blacksmiths to craft new items for me. I see. Uh, I'll have a word with the smith. Um, Very well. Sorry. I appreciate doing a business with you, sir. I'll run up to Tom. Tom, I almost forgot about you. You need to take this too. Or wait, wait. He, was he? He wasn't affected, was he? Uh, I wasn't bit by it, uh, so oh. didn't didn't get any spider bites. So uh, you hold on to that for now. I'm a little forgetful. I'll uh, tell the doctor we got uh, one more dose left. I see. Like... Uh, tell you what, I know the recipe, so why don't you hold on to that? Ooh, thank you. Hopefully, I'll never come across those things again. But hopefully. It'd be nice uh, to have sorry, this uh, let, me, let me bring Killian out here, too. Since you're taking it. Oh, sorry. yeah, she's out here playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll thank the doctor again and bow. Um, from the south, you kind of see down the path heading from the direction of the shore. Previously, uh, you see one sec. There we go. Uh, you see two figures approach. Uh, it is uh, the headmaster who you recognize um, walking down the path. They kind of walk in sort of a hurried uh, pace and a uh, small uh, bird person, uh, Kokra. It's cute. Um, you see kind of Lavender on the other side of you turn towards them and say, ah, that should be Tunic back then. Um, and the headmaster sort of walks right up to you and says, huh, I just, I heard last night and rushed over. <laughs> Chad. <laughs> um, <Sorry>. Yo, <laughs> stop. <laughs> and um, I heard last night and uh, rushed right over. Uh, are you lot all right? Is that what uh, you call detention? <laughs> a little overboard, don't you think? No, uh, typically it's just a short little boring trek down to the cave to look at some old drawings on the ground. Uh, what exactly happened? 
what exactly happened is that we almost died. It's true. Oof, indeed. Uh, we were, well, we fought some Myconids, which were uh, in one of the warded areas that the ward was down. Um, we were the informed ward was that down? Indeed. That uh, shouldn't ward, be possible, but I'll have to inspect for four? myself. Ward 4. Uh, I'll do some inspecting for myself. But um, I didn't think that possible. Yes. Uh, in addition to the Myconids, we also fought uh, a small group of uh, mockingbird spiders that had lured us uh, further into the path below. Oh dear! If, if not for this man right here, we would surely have all died. I've, Indeed. I've heard of those, and um, it's not. Pleasant what I've heard. I'm glad you lot are all all right. Uh, he kind of looks towards Thomas and says, uh, "Thank you for the uh, assistance you've given. Um, I can't thank you enough." <laughs> Chat going nuts over Duna coins. Who mentioned coins? I didn't even. I like went right over my head. I don't even know. I just they're just at chat. Yeah, they're, coins, they're going coins? nuts about Duna coins, but um, <laughs> I don't even remember anybody mentioning a coin. Maybe Kenner was talking about money, but. Mm -hmm. Chat's crazy. <laughs> they all just like showed up as if they like, teleported in. I love you guys. Love the brass hands. Um, Yeah, so. Uh, the hemister says, uh, well, I suppose we ought to get you lot back to the uh, school then. Uh, it's been over a month, as I'm sure you've heard. Yeah, indeed, we were shocked to hear that it was actually a month. For, for us, it seemed like only a day. That, that sort of temporal distortion... It, not something that I've heard about this place before. You're sure that you didn't just lose track of time? Oh, we're sure. We're Very sure. Solid. Uh, we don't even, we never slept. Tom pipes up and says, uh, Headmaster, is it? Oh, I've spent quite a bit of time down there myself, and I do notice some odd happenings, so I can back these students' story up. That's uh, worrying to say the, the least, but um, for now, I think we ought to focus on just getting you back safe and sound to the school. Um, Headmaster, if I may, I know not if this has to do with this distortion you speak of, uh, but I acquired uh, this crystal down below, and uh, Kirk will take the blue crystal out of his pack and hold it out to Headmaster. Uh, when he sees it, you see, like, recognition flash in his eyes for a sec, and then he is going to grab it out of your hand, um, but he's going to use his robe to avoid touching it directly. Okay. Uh, where did you, where did you find this? Um, this was on one of the lower levels, uh, not the lowest that we went, but it was near where the mockingbird spiders attacked us. You you should not be touching this. Do you have any more of it on you? Uh, no, that was the only fragment I obtained. Good. Uh, if you're okay with it, I'll hold on to this for the moment. I don't think this is something you should be messing with. I uh, trust your judgment, Headmaster. Um, I he... thought Billy was into the uh, dangerous substances. He okay, pulls... going to get really close and look at the blue object okay um it's yeah that fistful or a fist size um sort of broken piece of crystal uh it's still it still uh has that sort of blue glow to it um even out here in the I sunlight love you. and um love you too, Gilly. <laughs> oh sorry Aaron's <laughs> behind me sorry about that um still has that blue glow to it that you can see uh killian it's sort of a translucent uh light blue um, and says, the headmaster says, uh, careful, Killian, don't touch it. And he pulls a um, handkerchief 
Didn't Gilly bite it? Yep. <laughs> oh no. He pulls okay. a handkerchief out of um, his pocket and wraps it in it, and then tucks it away in his robe. Hey, is my hat attuned to me yet? Um, no, because you just went right to bed. How do I attune it? Does it not just do it automatically? Uh, you gotta take an hour to attune to an item while in physical contact with it. It's like an active thing that you have to do. Um, you can also spend an hour to uh, investigate to see what it does. Okay. Um, but that's a separate thing, so it would be two full hours if you wanted to study it and then attune to it. But you can also just attune to it directly without knowing what it does. Um, but that is not always the most advised thing. So, like, you would only want to do that if you weren't sure about... Yeah, if you were like, this item's creepy and it might be cursed, yeah. then uh, okay. you could study it first and try to determine its properties. Yeah, and okay. then attune to it. And also, if you just attune to it, then you're attuned to it, but you still don't know what it does. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, so that might have a passive bonus to you if that's the item, but if it's something that you have to actively use, then you might not know how to trigger it. Right. Good to okay, know. so what do I need to do? Uh, take a short rest to kind of attune to it, or a full hour, essentially. Whenever we have a chance to do that, that's what I want. Okay. Hopefully soon, we can get the hell out of here. <laughs> want to be rid of this cave. Uh, yes, we should be getting you back to the school. The boat is uh, still at the dock, so... If everybody is together, uh, where's Gilda? Ah, uh, we went back to sleep. Yeah, you know Gilly. I am back asleep. <laughs> I'll uh, rush in. Go well, I up. suppose we should wake him and uh, get on back to the school. I know you have had, well, I guess a long month. And uh, likely have lots to catch up with. Wait, we spent a month down there? Mm -hmm. uh, indeed, Wait. Kenro. It seemed okay. like a day, but it was in actuality a month. Um, Kirk will salute the rangers and say, uh, uh, we appreciate your efforts in searching for us, rangers, and uh, I apologize if I apologize for your injuries that you sustained during this time. Um, they all sort of look towards you and say, uh, some of them kind of give you a little hand wave and some of them uh, just sort of shake their head. And um, Elcor says, ah, it's part of our job description. Don't worry too much about us. We can handle it. Mm, well, it is appreciated. And uh, he'll just give him kind of a parting salute. Um, the headmaster, uh, seeing that you all. Oh, hang on, let me grab. If, uh, Gilly, did you wake up when Yo woke you up? I did, and I wandered outside to mm -hmm. meet everyone else. Alright, then you're both back. Uh, so seeing that you're all together, the headmaster say, will, will say, uh, well, if that's everything, then let's uh, get you right back to the school. <laughs> um, oh, sorry. Theophilia should be here first. Um, Lavender steps forward and says, um, we will uh, we'll take a little bit of a peek around because I, I am curious about this uh, so we're going to remain here for the time being and the headmaster says uh, yes I I'm going to bring some of my professors back and we'll set that ward back up if we can uh, so if you could remain here until we do so that would be great um, and then he's going to begin to lead you back towards the boat and Tom kind of calls out after you. Uh, actually, is it all right if I tag along? Uh, some of your students mentioned that uh, you got a smith at the school, and I'd like to take advantage of that. And the headmaster sort of looks at him and kind of looks him up and down and says, I suppose I don't see any reason why not. Uh, we do have to thank you for uh, 
rescuing our students after all. So uh, you may accompany us. Of course. Um, so with that, he's going to begin to lead you all back towards the docks. Tom's a good guy. Or whatever he is. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, there's no sense in me dragging everybody here, but um, you arrive back at the docks. Mm -hmm. It's early morning, um, and there's a boat that's kind of tied up against the uh, the wooden dock. Uh, just big enough for the, a lot of you to all squeeze in. It's a little bit tighter fit this time. Now there's more of you. Uh, Croak will be the one to get in first, just in case it goes. All right, Tom will follow you immediately after, because <laughs> he's the other person in heavy armor. Can Roe and Killian become one person, taking up less space? <laughs> Sit on each other's shoulders. <laughs> uh, the, the old child in a trench coat technique. Get you a super big maid robe, colored <laughs> robe, and put it over you. Yeah. And uh, the boat will set off back towards the school. So here is where we can shift back to our other campaign. Okay. Cool. Out of character, that was awesome. In character, that place sucked. <laughs> <laughs> True. Oh, hang on, I'm in the wrong page. There we go. All right, so we travel back from the path below here, for those who are unaware, um, and make our way back along the coastline to the island of Nilavon, which has its own little beach. Some people missing here. So the boat kind of gently pushes up against the shoreline, and you find yourself back on the beaches of Nil Levant. Uh, the headmaster should be here as well. It was good to be back. Yay, we made it! Yay, we didn't die! Good work, everyone. Oh, big, big <laughs> Oh. Yes, that could have gone a lot worse. No, it didn't go that great either. Uh, so you all pile off the boat. Uh, Croak, I'm assuming, carefully. <laughs> yeah, I was going to wait till last, but I saw Tom jump off. Too, so. <laughs> yeah, it's a little, it's a little cramped on the boat, but um, <laughs> uh, you can all fit. Uh, Tom just kind of walks off with his ankles deep in water. He doesn't really take the same care that you have, Crook. Yeah, Crook kind of beelines for the blanket. He's kind of trying to get some of the sand out of his boots. Uh, so it's early in the morning still. Um, and the professor says, um, well, it's a Sunday, I suppose you aren't aware. Um, so you will have school tomorrow, but um, I understand that you're quite far behind. Um, I, I would like to talk to you a lot at some point about what occurred down there. Uh, Tom, you as well. But um, I think you've had quite enough excitement, so I'd like to let you settle back into your dormitory for the time being. Um, I'll call you to my office in some time. Uh, Theophilius, I would like to speak with you now, though. Uh, of course, Professor. Uh, of course, Headmaster. Um, and they, uh, the two of them will head off in the direction of the... School. Uh, fish breakfast? Fish breakfast? Fish breakfast? <laughs> uh, sure, yo. Would you like to catch some fish? I go with. <laughs> I go up to Tom and be like, uh, Mr. Tom, it appears you and I have a shared destination. Shall we proceed? 
What's our shared destination? I'm headed to the Smith. And so am I. Well, can't say I know exactly where the Smith is. He kind of pauses and looks around at the uh, towering school out in front of him. And says, well, this... look, look, for, look for you. I happen to know. Perfect. Uh, this place has uh, changed quite a bit since I've last been here. Um, a little taken aback. Goes ah, yes, it's quite full of itself. This place is nothing, false nobility. Well, I don't know too much about nobility, but trusty judgment, I guess. All right, that's all I had. Uh, so you, I'm are gonna. You... Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I want to go to the apothecary. Okay, um, so the three of you are heading. Is everybody else staying on the beach? I... Uh, I was just going to eat some fish breakfast with you. Yeah. Kalian really wants to run to her room and go see her potted plant. Oh, that's a good <laughs> idea. I wasn't going to stay long eating. I was just going to do it quick. Yeah, one. we're just going to do it real quick. Cause, just because... Right. I mean, um, then I'll let, it, had a I'll, good meal. I'll let everybody else leave, but... Um... The two of you will just kind of accompany you later. Um, cool. So we'll yeah, cover... we don't have to RP it out. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's... Hang on. What's the state I left Sundowska in? <laughs> let's find out. Mm -hmm. Ah, there we go. Get rid of you, get rid of you, get rid of you. Hellion okay. sprints to the dorms. Um, God, it's actually been like a real-life month since we've been to the college. It has. Um, the air is colder now, um, <laughs> and uh, there's no snow, but uh, the the leaves have mostly fallen off the trees. Uh, Tom just kind of waits for you to show him the way to the uh, Smith. But Gilly, you're heading to the apothecary here, or the apothecary yeah. like the other one. <laughs> No, this one. Okay, I figured you Dallas, I wanted to go talk to Dallas. Okay. Um, then let's do that right now. Okay. All right, let's let's find out who I left. Oh, sorry, that's not my place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let go, one, two, really. All right, let's get rid of you, 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 and you. Okay. So I'm gonna go in and um, wave first at Dallas. Uh, she's kind of yawning as she looks up at you. Ooh, uh, morning. Uh, morning. And then she I did. recognition sort of hits her and she goes, uh, you, "You're back." I haven't yeah, seen yeah. Well, I wanted you to look at um, this collection that I have to tell me if any of them, any of this, is safe to smoke. <laughs> safe to? Oh, um, I guess I can take a look. Uh, and then he like opens up his satchel and there's like um 20 bags that are all labeled full of different kinds of like mushrooms probably some of the minerals he picked up like um the stone and things and then um mosses and leaves um yeah i, I believe you also grabbed did you grab some of the crystal or did you just taste that and then not do it no i just bit it and gave it back to um croak Okay. Um, Am so, I glowing? No. Uh, she no. she begins to kind of sort through what you have, um, and so she just kind of is like mumbling to herself. And this is your garden variety lichen. This is uh, just a uh, fern you'd find on the side of the road. Um, and then she she separates them into sort of two piles. Um, and she says, this pile over here, and points to one of them, this stuff is, uh, I suppose it's harmless to smoke, but um, it's just kind of your, your garden variety uh, plants that you'd find, you know, in like a forest or side of the road, just your ferns and your grass and your moss. Um, I don't think it'll kill you to smoke it, but I don't know many people who do. Oh, I'm, uh, I've already smoked some of this already, you're right. Some of it smells really good, though. 
and he opens up a bag that has like um some petals from the blue plant that smell good and he kind of like opens it up towards her so she can smell it the fragrance she takes a sniff and says oh yeah yeah uh, i see that this smell rather nice yep and then he never heard of uh, folk smoking flowers but i suppose it's possible and he's like yeah yeah i know and what about um the mushrooms mosses from the cave yeah, so she's separated um, some of the moss that you grabbed in that cave into the, the normal plants pile. Um, but she separated out those mushrooms, um, both the uh, shriekers, the small little ones that you fought first, and then the bigger myconids that you grabbed some of. Um, and then I also and then grabbed like, the mushrooms that were in that cave. room. Correct, yeah. yeah. So those groups are all separated into a different pile. And she says, uh, I've never seen these before, so I would express, I guess, caution in uh smoking those but um i guess i can't stop you and then he's like okay i'll probably be back in a few days that's a little worrying but but i'll um, keep that in mind i'll keep it in mind thank you i suppose uh i'm usually open unless it's the middle of the night so um come back and see me if you need it Try to uh, stay safe and uh, be responsible. Okay. And then he's like, um, "Any of would any of this be helpful for healing?" Um. Well, again, I don't know the properties of these mushrooms here, so maybe. Um, but the rest, she points to the other pile. This stuff is mostly just harmless grasses, ferns, and moss, and flowers. So this stuff, no, but. Potentially, some of this stuff I don't recognize, maybe. Uh, if, and then, you, if you experience any sort of effect like that, uh, actually, do come back and tell me, because I would like to know. So then he goes into his satchel, because um, for the mushrooms, since he thought that they'd be smokable, he has, like, an extra, um, like, bag sample of them, because he doesn't know if he's going to see them again. And he says, could you look at these beforehand and test them with your, like, little... And he makes, like, a hand motion. Like, a potion hand motion. Testing. I could, yeah. If you leave it with me, I can get back to you on that. If you come and visit, maybe tomorrow. Yeah, I, I'll be back. I'll take a look at it. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad that you lot are safe. The others, are they're back too? Yeah, that yeah, the, everyone came back. Uh, that's good. We were all pretty worried about you. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't. I was kind of confusing because we found out a month had passed on the surface. You mean, you you didn't experience a month? No, it felt like a day. That's, if I remember correctly. That's odd. Um, I didn't. Never heard of that kind of effect before, so I'm afraid I don't know how to treat that sort of uh, sensation. But um, if you start to experience any weird side effects of that, come back and talk to me, I suppose. Okay. Have a nice day, then. Thank you. And um, thankfully, on the each of the little bags, it has like a description of... Um, where he found them, what they look like, what the plant looked like itself, and then how big the plant appeared to be, um, and then what the whole plant looked like. Mm -hmm. It's pretty detailed about the plants. Okay. Yeah, he is not a junkie. <laughs> he was a junkie, he'd just smoke it without asking her to check it out. Give me an educated junkie. <laughs> Just a very cautious and detailed junkie. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's, uh, so we're going to go to Killian running, who is sprinting to the dorm rooms thing. Um, but uh, <laughs> just one sec, Killian, before you run in. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to place some more people there. Uh, at least some people would be awake at this point. 
All right, now you can do your spin thing. All right, Kalian rushes in and bang and slams the door open, and then keeps running to her room. All right, you kind of get out of your peripheral. You can see these people in the dining room, but you run right past them. <laughs> and then she runs into her room and finds her plant. What does it look like? Uh, so as you open the door, <laughs> the uh, the pot that you've placed it in has cracked, um, and the dirt has kind of spilled out across your floor. Um, and it's now about half your height sitting up on your desk. Oh, shit. <laughs> um, it's like a small little sapling. Huh. She kind of, like, gathers it in her arm. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. You can kind of grab, grab it by the bundle of... You can grab it by the bundle of roots and sort of pick up some of the dirt with it. Sweet. All right. And she's going to bring it with her. Uh, it's sort of Just like dragon dirt everywhere. <laughs> it's ever so slightly wilting, um, but um, oh, it's, no. still, it's still it's not definitely not dead. Okay, good. And then she's gonna bring it back with her to the school. Oh, hey guys, bye guys. Uh, what? <laughs> they just kind of barely get a word out as you run right by them. <laughs> she just runs out and runs back to the school. Uh, so where exactly are you going? Uh, I'm gonna uh, plant it in the altar. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, then we'll get to Kenro and Tom for now. So we'll come back to you. Uh, delete, 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 delete. Him to the smithy. All right. Um. The two guards are standing out front, and then as you walk up, they go like, uh, hold on, it's the weekend, school's locked up. Uh, and then they recognize you, Kenro, and say, uh, oh, you're back. Yes, yes, I'm back, I'm back. I have business with the blacksmith. Uh, oh, uh, well, actually, I think he's in, but um, I guess I can unlock the school for you then. Um, they just kind of, they give Tom an odd look, and they're just like, Sort of trying to figure out what exactly he's doing here. Very not. He's with me. Uh, I suppose. I'll keep an eye on you lot anyway. Uh, we had a key go missing a little while back. So, um... And he unlocks the door to the school. <laughs> and, uh, kind of... Motions you guys to enter. Welcome, Tom, to the halls of education and something, something inspirational speech about the school. Uh, Tom kind of pauses as you walk off ahead of him and is looking around, uh, sort of in awe of, wow, they really changed this place. Um, but then eventually he catches up with you. Uh, Dustin says uh, he kind of peeks his head in the door and says yeah smithy's in i guess you can talk to him uh goris you got a student here who wants to talk to you i suppose you got some time and goris says uh i suppose i have some time so i will lead at the top yeah key missing who could that possibly be Um, yes, the the fire is currently lit in his forge, and he is um, just kind oh, of inspecting some stuff. Yeah, you've met him before. You talked to him. Okay. Greetings, you, my good sir. You also had I, him make you something, didn't you? Uh, maybe. Yeah, you ordered some short swords. You oh, ordered neat. Two short swords. Oh yeah. Um, Goris kind of looks you over and says. Oh, I, I remember you. You, uh, there was an order a little while back, and then you never showed up to pick it up. Yes, I found myself, uh, inconvenienced. Ah, well, I, I have it right here for you, so, uh, you can take that with you too, but was that the business you had? It was not. My friend here has some business for you. He is a new arrival here at the school. And I also have uh, some new business for you. Oh, I see. I will be commis commissioning some new scale mail and a shield courtesy of Professor Nightingale. 
uh, well, courtesy of Professor Nightingale, I haven't spoken to him. Is he back too? He went missing as well. Oh yes, he's back too, and he will definitely vouch for providing me with uh, my new medicine. Well, I would have to talk to him first before I can say that he'd vouch for it, but um, I can begin the order if you want. Um, he kind of kind of sh shifts around looking for his. Um, I don't think I have any skill mail on me, but um, I can make some for you real quick. That would be excellent. That's uh, fifty gold then. Oh, uh, Professor Nightingale will be covering it. Well, I haven't talked to him, but I'll start it, and if uh, if he tells me that he's covering it, then uh, he it'll be all paid for when you come back to pick it up. Excellent. Same with the shield. Oh, a shield too. I did. I did. I leave the shield, or do I have the shield on? I don't remember you leaving the shield. We can say you still have it. I don't remember you okay, taking that off. I, I think you shield. just said you took off your armor. I don't recall taking off the shield, but you might have done that. Okay. But I'll let you then have it. The I, I, then I don't need a shield then. All right. Uh, okay, and, uh, then... Uh, don't, don't, some... forget my, my, don't forget my good friend here, Tom. He, uh, of course, has the stuff he needs as well. Uh, yes, fellow. Uh, what exactly did you need? Um. Well, uh, I need... Uh, I need... Another long sword to replace this one. He uh, unsheaths the kind of broken one that's not even half as long as it was before. Uh, so new long sword to replace this, uh, and uh, I would like to fix some of the uh, dents in my armor. I'll see. Uh, well, if you take the armor off then for me, I can uh, I can fix it up for you. You could also just order some new stuff because uh, that looks pretty banged up. He kind of looks around at it, um, and Tom says, "No, I uh, would prefer to keep this armor." <laughs> it's not a subtle change of voices. I'm just mixing them up. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be hard talking to yourself. <laughs> it really, it really is weird. Um, this is a good. This is a good coincidence. Also, I actually equip those sort swords. So. Okay. Um, I'd actually like to keep the armor on. Do you think you can uh, fix the dents while it's still on? It's still on? I, I, I suppose I can give it a shot, but um, I've never done that before. Uh, well, if you, if you hang on for a bit, then I can get started. Uh, did you need anything else then? Uh, Kinderot, right? Oops, I just dropped all my shit. Um, no, no, uh, my business is concluded here. And, uh, oh, also, that does remind me, the school will be covering Tom's costs as well for his services in rescuing us students. Ah, no, nah, I can kill him myself. Um, and he pulls out a sack of what appears to be gold. Ken Roach shrugs and says... You do you. Um, so, can you're free to leave. Um, he, can, uh, Tom is staying behind. Let me get some. All right. Um, I'll go wherever. Probably back to the dorms, so I can attune to this hat. All right. Uh, so then. Let's head back to the square because uh, over here. Oh, hang on, the beach is still playing. So <laughs> forgot to turn off. Um, nope, not that. Yes. Uh, so Gilly, you leave the apothecary and run into uh, Croak and Yo, who are just heading out from up from the beach. Larger than they were before. <laughs> Big boys. <laughs> okay. Mm, that was a delicious fish breakfast, Yo. You guys had fish? Yes, really hit the spot. 
We said fish breakfast. I asked mm. everybody. Yo said it three times, I believe. I'm gonna head to the dorm and get me some meat and cheese. Mm. I might eat some of that as well, too. Yeah, who needs. <laughs> is it, after not being here for so long, I think we deserve a break. Um, as you reach the center of Sundial Square, you see from the direction of the dormitories, Killian just sprinting, holding a tree back towards the square. <laughs> oh, hey guys. Gotta go, guys. Uh, Alright. Nice shrub. <laughs> hey, Kenro. Gotta go, Kenro. Uh, yeah, you pass Kenro, who's just leaving the school. <laughs> and he's heading back in the direction of the dormitories. Nature clerics are a bit strange, after all. Hmm. Uh, Kenro, the um, Destin locks the door behind you as you leave the school, and uh, you make your Wait. way back to the square. The what of the what locks the what? Destin locks the door behind you as you leave the school. Oh, is that one of the guards? Yeah. Okay. Um, so as you guys kind of you turn the corner and Kenro, you're following behind, so they'll get there first. Uh, so, we're approaching the dormitories. Oh. And... Alright. Uh, before you stands the uh, dormitories that you haven't seen in some time. Good to be back. Uh, the trees yeah. that kind of line the edges of the fence that makes up the that uh, marks the perimeter of the dormitories, a lot of their leaves have now fallen out and lie on the ground. Um, it's very clear that time has passed. Still can't believe we were in there an entire month. The crook will breathe a heavy sigh of relief on seeing the rest of the work of the dormitory. Yeah, it's still slightly ajar from uh, Killian sprinting out. <laughs> well, shall we? What? Uh, Croak, as you hit here, um, from the edges of your kind of narrowed peripheral vision from your visor, um, something just tackles you to the ground. <laughs> Croak is knocked prone. <laughs> um... And as you kind of gather your senses, um, you can tell that it, it is definitely the uh, young barbarian woman um, who sort of almost has tears in her eyes and says, you lot, you were supposed to be going for detention, not not a trip around the world. Uh, it is good to see you, Esther. Um, I apologize for our absence. We only recently learned how long it was. Uh, we thought we were only gone one day. One day? No, it's been a month. Uh, indeed. Apparently, according to the headmaster, there's some type of distortion uh, with time down in the path below. So what seemed like one day to us was one month up here. That's weird. You missed so many dinners. Uh, please don't remind me, Asta. Uh, I know. Uh, she kind of like elbows you and goes, well, we have to make up for them then, won't we? Uh, Crook kind of perks up. Uh, certainly. We shall do that indeed. Uh, you can kind of see Crook from the edge uh, around the corner. Windermere is kind of peeking out of her room. And Amelia is sort of looking around um, the edge of the dining hall, looking at you guys. Um, and then recognition kind of hits their faces as they realize that you're back and they approach the group. Uh, Windermere has... Uh, an imp sitting on her shoulder. Uh, an That's interesting new. creature you have there, Windermere. Does it have a name? Uh, not yet. Uh, I can't think of a very good name. Um, but it just sort of manifested one day. And I can't get rid of him. Hmm. Hmm. Well... If you can't think of anything, perhaps you could consult Killian. I bet she could come up with something good. Uh, I see. Mm -hmm. I, I will ask her. 
Um, Amelia kind of is still startled and says, "You guys are back. Um, you, you've been gone for so long. What happened?" Apparently, detention is really harsh here. Uh, by now, kind of, you've arrived behind the rest of the party. Okay. I'm huge. There you go. Would not recommend getting in trouble. Uh, uh, indeed, we were sent to check up on the wards, but one was not active, so we had to investigate further. Uh, we fought myconids, uh, giant mockingbird spiders. Uh, we were almost defeated entirely at one point, but somehow we were managed to be saved by a fellow by the name of Tom, who, who uh, you will likely meet on the school grounds at some point. But um, yes, with his efforts, our efforts, and Professor Theophilius's efforts, uh, we managed to make it back. Oh, I see. Sounds like you guys had quite an adventure then. Um, and Amelia says, and missed lots of class. Uh, yes, Amelia, I would like to ask to borrow a look at your notes uh, sometime. Uh, well, I'm able. actually, I um, when you guys were gone for more than a week, I actually started making um, well, cram, cram notes for you guys. Um, oh, so uh, I actually, I can I can do a little tutoring session in the evenings if you want, because I I actually made a a list of everything you missed. Certainly. Too kind of you. Yo, Bell, thank her. Well, that is much appreciated, Amelia. Um, she just kind of gives you like a shy nod. Um, and Essa says, you look hungry. We were just having breakfast. Well, it wow. is about time. We just had a fish breakfast, but it is about time for second breakfast, I, I believe. Indeed. Well, uh, you can prepare some stuff. There's still some leftovers in the kitchen. Well, let us gather them. Uh, so, I want to just, while you guys gather your breakfast, I want to jump back to... <sighs> the nature cleric who's sprinting around the school. Uh, so, Killian, you run back up to the school, uh, past Ken Rote, who's just leaving. Uh, let me jump in. And, um... <laughs> Massive Killian shows up. <laughs> D Dustin is kind of turning around from the door and looks up at you. He says, oh, oh, you're back too. I uh, did not expect a lot of you to show up. Oh, hey, uh, I need to get in there. Yeah, what you uh, what you got there? Um, a tree. Uh, I, I can see I, that. I, I need to go into the altar room. I I gotta make some prayers. All right, doesn't explain the tree. No, um, the tree needs to join me. I see. It's a nature thing, I guess. Yeah. I suppose. <laughs> um, let me unlock the school then for you, I guess. Uh, but I will have to accompany. I will have to accompany you. Okay. Uh, because we did have you know some robberies recently. Oh no, that's not good. Yeah, key went missing about uh, over a month ago, and uh, really haven't, haven't found it yet. So. That's not good. He and you said the door. there was robberies? Mm, no, the key was the robbery I was talking about. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's not good. Not good at all. We have had no. to uh, just tighten up security. We do longer watches mm -hmm. now. So, uh, you know, a little bit exhausted, but uh, you know how it is. Well, I hope the key turns up for. Yeah, me too. Then I can get some sleep that for once. Yeah. Alright, uh, so you open the door to the altar room. Yeah. You can bring yourself to the right room. 
Uh, in the top right, I believe, yep. All right. Um, there's a couple new plants in here since you've last been here. Okay. Oh. Uh, just one of them is a flower that you didn't recognize here before. Um, and the other is just sort of a, a small fern. Uh, but other All than that, right. do you recognize this um, this small little garden that's inside this room? Is there, like, enough space, like, right here to plant the tree? Uh, yeah, there's there's lots of different spaces that you can plant uh, something. Okay. All right. Killian's going to dig out a spot with her hands deep enough for it to fill up the, for the tree roots to fit. All right. It, it takes a little bit longer than just planting a flower because this is a rather large tree. Um, and you do get your hands kind of covered in dirt. But eventually, after some time, you... Uh, make a hole big enough to fit this um, tree into. All right. She pats the dirt down all nicely and admires her handiwork. All right. This should grow now. Um, I didn't bring any water with me, did I? No. Hmm. Uh, hold on. I could, yeah. Well, I'm on a mission to go get some water quickly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not sure in your inventory, did you check for like a, a water flask or anything like that? Oh, yeah, true. Um, yeah, I think I, you typically start with a water skin, but. Um, yeah. I know that a lot of people do, but I don't know that you necessarily do. Yeah. I do have one. She does have one. Perfect. Ah, oh, sweet. All right, you don't need to leave them. All right. Killian pours down, pours the water onto the tree, around the tree, the whole flask, uh, oh. or the whole water skin. Yeah, the soil around it is damp. All right. She pats the tree on the head. All right, there. That's all settled. Thank God you didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> And she's all set, and she heads out. Okay. Uh, so you're making your way back to the dormitory, then? Yeah. Right. Uh, De Destin kind of waited outside of the room for you. Well, thanks, Destin, for unlocking that door. I really appreciate it. Yeah, all right. Uh, happy to help, I guess. Um, he he kind of like looked his head in as you uh, left, and... Because you're not carrying the tree on you, and it's like <laughs> he just kind of shrugs his shoulders. Must be a nature thing. <laughs> and then Killian's gonna stop in this room on the left. Hi, Alabaster. Um, <laughs> he looks kind of startled. He's like, uh, "What?" As if he w was not expecting <laughs> you to show up, because um, you've been <laughs> gone for over a month now. Um, and he almost forgot about the uh, the glory suffer. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> it all comes rushing back to him at once and he doesn't have any time to say anything before you run off <laughs> well have a nice day you two uh, you too uh, and then he uh, locks the door behind you and heads back to his place mumbles I wish they would have stayed down there <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Killian, if you're heading back to the dormitories, yep. Um, then by now you guys have already dug into your breakfast that you prepared. Um, and the rest of the group have kind of joined you at the table. Okay, and also I have some spot. There we go. Much better. <laughs> I remember. It's Aww. been a while, but I remember. Yeah, uh, that's great. Uh, I don't know what Gillian can run are doing, but they can decide. Um, uh, so I'm gonna spend an leftovers. hour attuning that hat. I'm I'm going into the kitchen to get. Wait, is there food already? Uh, they were prepping some when you showed up. Oh, okay. You so I'm gonna. Them, actually, I don't know. I'm gonna uh, come in and sit. I'm hungry. Okay, I'm we... also hungry in real life. Can we roll food food table to find out what the leftovers were? Sure. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Ah. Uh -huh. 
It's been too long, so sure. Uh, I want to roll it. Okay, go ahead. Let me pull it up while you do that. Oh, then we have to have our our chill music then. Let me go back to YouTube. It's been a very long time, so I'm hoping you guys remember this motif. Ah, feels good, man. Way better than creepy cave noises. All right, what'd you get on your D100? <laughs> yeah, that, that weird one little noise that keeps happening in the cave. Uh, what'd you get, sir? Uh, 18. 18. <laughs> okay, I guess they had breakfast for dinner. Um, it is a goat and quail egg omelet served with lingonberries. Mm -hmm. Brock will, as usual, shovel it through his visor. And uh, I guess he'll just go a bit in, in more detail, explaining like what happened while we were down there, how we saw the runes and um, all the different creatures and just like everything that happened with Esta and you. Uh, just for one sec, Kenra, you, I'm assuming you're doing it in your room. Uh, wherever. Wherever you'd like. Sure, in my room. I'll sit in my bed and start attuning the hat. Okay. Um, so you're attuning, not focusing on it to figure out what it does? Uh, I guess I'll focus on it. What, what do I need to do to figure out what it does? Uh, you just spend some time kind of inspecting it, trying to figure out if you can summon any sort of effect out of it. So, so it's just an, it's the same okay. amount of time, but there are two different time periods that you have to spend. All right, uh, so I'll spend one hour investigating it, and then depending on the effect, I'll spend another hour attuning to it. Okay, so um, the rest of you kind of talk for that hour then and eat your breakfast. Uh, so you spend uh, some time so filling in uh, the rest of the group as to what you happened there. What were we going to say, Chris? I was just going to ask. You said it was morning, right? It is, yeah. Okay, just making sure. Uh, so yeah, she spends some time filling them in and they ask various questions about things and uh, ask to Asked to ask if you tasted the spider, if you tried cooking it way down there. Um. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, I did not, Esther. Um, she looks I a little bit disappointed. He says, eh, maybe next time, then. Yes, maybe. You'll have to come along with us if we go again. Yeah, maybe. I, I mean, I guess I'm not trying to get detention, but, um... Uh, me neither after that experience. Uh, well, while I believe you, well, excuse me, while I know you are invincible, Esther, um, I believe you should stay here at the school to protect the other students just in case anything happens. Mm, uh, yeah, good idea. Yes, we, we can handle the path below. We came back with nary a scratch on us. <laughs> All right, I'll trust you, Amazon. Um, the three of them, uh, Esther, Amelia, and Windermere, uh, they look a little different, um, a little more experienced. Uh, so gameplay purposes, they have also kind of leveled up. Cool. Again, uh, that imp will not leave Windermere's shoulder. <laughs> um, so any, like, stuff that we would notice to determine, like, their subclass or whatever? Or... We need to ask them. Um, Esther and Amelia, not particularly. Um, but uh, Windermere, you can definitely tell from the imp. You can take a good guess. Yeah, no doubt. Mm -hmm. um, well, I know it out of character, but yeah. Uh, Esther, it appears that you've been training throughout the month. Mm, yeah, yeah, I've been hard at work with uh, you know Professor Harper and all that. Hmm, indeed. Well, you certainly appear stronger. Um, we also gained strength while we were down in the path below. Oh, um, yeah? It, indeed. Uh, it appears that I am able to channel magical energies now. Really? Actually, you know, I figured out that I can do stuff too. 
No. Then what did you learn? Well, it always just happened by accident in the past, but now, now I can I can do it at will. That sounds like my thing. What can you do now? Well, if I if I focus really hard and I get real mad, then I can uh, can make weird things happen. Uh, I can't really predict what happens, but I can consistently make something happen. Uh -huh. Interesting. It's kind of the opposite of my thing. I have to be really calm. Uh, indeed, say. Mm, well, yeah, I guess it works differently for individuals then. Mm, surely. Well, congratulations on your newfound strength. Uh, I didn't think you could get stronger. <laughs> right? Mm. Well, there's always somewhere to go up, up from where you are. True. Uh, by now, Killian, you've arrived back at the, the uh, dormitory. All right, she shows up covered in dirt and takes a seat at the table. <laughs> yeah, her hands, like, almost up to her elbows are covered in dirt. <laughs> and she's got, like, uh, dirt trapped under her fingernails and everything. <laughs> are there still leftovers left? Uh, yeah, there's still a little bit of food left. They just kind of prepared one big plate. She starts just kind of like picking out with her hands. <laughs> and eating uh, it. As you'd like, Killian. <laughs> oh, thank God. I, I've. I did. <laughs> Don't speak, just eat. <laughs> yeah. She shoves food in her mouth. <laughs> um, Amelia looks kind of grossed out by what you're doing, but Esther sees no issue. <laughs> How you doing, Amelia? She says with a mouthful of food. Well, well, I'm I'm good. I'm more worried about you guys. Um, you've been gone for quite a while. I, I mean, we're all alive, so that's good. I, I saw you uh, sprint out holding a, a big tree. What was that all about? Mm, I had to go plant that. It's been sitting in my room for the entire month. It's been, Apparently, it's been growing in your. Actually, yeah. you know, I did see uh, Josephine sometimes go in there with a, a, a pot of water, but um, I didn't really know what oh, she was she... doing. Oh, thank God, someone's been watering it. Oh, I'm gonna thank her later because I would have. Uh, I was I was worried it would be dead when we got back. Mm. She sure does do a lot for us. Perhaps the next time we're in Arcanae, we could get her a treat from the bakery, Killian. Yeah, we should. We could get her a fish pie. Uh, sure. Aren't we going to do that? Do we? I mean... What? Did we? No, he Sorry. gave the pie to Esther. Yeah. 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 Somebody else. Was it Esther that you gave it to? Yeah, I got oh, a yeah. fish pie. Yeah, he got the present. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this, and you this guys made fun it. of me. What? It feels so it. long ago. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Amelia, uh, Windermere, you two seem stronger as well. And uh, is that an imp? Windy? Am Amelia nods uh, to your comment. Krogan says, uh, yeah, I've been spending quite a long time uh, really learning a bunch of new spells. Hmm. Uh, what and, school uh, of magic have you been focusing on? Um, well, tell you the truth, I still haven't really picked. Hmm, uh, I'm a little conflicted as to what to focus on. I, I do really like um, abjurations uh, with Professor Redjoy, so I was thinking that direction, but if, if you guys have any input, then maybe you could help me. Input. <laughs> um, <Good one> go. <laughs> and Windermere says to you, Gilly, in regards to your comment. Uh, it, yes, uh, the imp it uh, it won't it won't leave my shoulder. It showed up one day, sitting on my chest as I awoke, and now it will not leave me alone. Can I? He <clears throat> kind of reaches out to the imp. Hi, Miss. Hi, little imp. Uh, it doesn't say anything, it just kind of nips at your finger. 
<clears throat> and she says, ah, uh, careful, he does that from time to time. Oh, he's really cute. Uh, sometimes he tries to bite my ear. Ah, how adorable he's a baby. So cute. Do they get bigger? Or will it get bigger? Um, I, I don't know. I guess I just have to find out. Make he cannot seem to get rid of him. I've tried hiding and he always appears right back on my shoulder when I turn around. He's ah. not really sure what to say. But he thinks um, at least it's not trying to kill you. I suppose. Actually, um, Killian and the rest of the group as well. Um, I, w I was saying that I don't exactly have a, a name for him, but if I'm stuck with him, I suppose I should give him one. Uh, do you have any ideas? Hmm. Impy. That hmm. is a little simple. Do they call you Gilly because you have gills, Gildor? <laughs> um, yes. You, you'd never seen them before? And he points uh, at his neck. There's nothing there. <laughs> well, I suppose I haven't smoked enough drugs to see those yet. <laughs> you should try it sometime. We should name it Amelia after Amelia. Uh. Mm. Or <laughs> she looks kind of Charlemagne. Of what about Charlemagne? Like the professor. Let's name it after the professor. <laughs> uh, in regards to your question about schools of magic, Amelia, I believe that Abjuration is a very strong school. Um, many of my spells are focused around Abjuration as well. Mm, yeah, I like the idea of um, like using my spells to protect people. Well, indeed, protecting others is a, a very good trait to have. Well, if you're Windermere, we can call him Windy, I guess. I, I do not what about wish Paymon? to call him Windy. Dang it. <laughs> you want to name him Paymon? <laughs> Paimon. <laughs> Paimon? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, w what is that name from? What, how do you think of that? I don't know. Seems pretty good. I, I suppose it is a decent. Uh, we do not have to decide today. I think I'm stuck with him for quite a while. Has it done anything yet? Interesting. Um, every once in a while when I think um, that I want like to go get something, uh, he will just already bring it to me. Uh, oh. As if he knew exactly what I Hi. wanted, but uh, I can't exactly figure out why he does this. I need to get does, me one of those. Does he like eat and go to the bathroom and everything? I, I don't know. Occasionally he disappears and then reappears, but I don't I don't know what he does. Yeah, I want one of them. Sounds really useful. Me too. Does it... So it just nibbles your ear and follows you around? Usually, yes. Occasionally it grabs something for me. Occasionally it uh, tries to take other things from others. Um, and I usually have to tell him not to do that. Oh, you can call it Killian. Not. <laughs> 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 yeah, Killian's a great name. Uh, Killy. So we can get more confused between Killy and Gillian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we need to give him another Illy name. <laughs> That'll surely not go wrong at all. No. Definitely won't confuse anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you spend an hour sort of talking with your uh, classmates. Um, and Kenro, uh, you... Yes. So you determine the nature, not the tune, right? Just to, uh, okay. Okay. Um, so, you determine that this hat has, when you hold it, the ability, or when you're wearing it, the ability to um, send a short 
a telepathic message to someone within 30 feet of you, as long as they are willing. Oh. Cool. All right. Uh, I guess I'll spend an hour attuning to it. Uh, well, that'll be another hour, so you guys can decide what you want to do. Um, I'm gonna put it away the, um, little, the, all of the, the plants and stuff into my, um, room. I guess I, I guess on the shelves I took off the books and put them in a corner so I can put all my plants and stuff. Um, you, Killian, as you head out into the hall, um, one sec, you, uh, hear the door open to your side, um, and close and then open again, and, uh, Josephina is standing in the door, and says, oh, oh hello, you, you, you're back. Um. Oh, Josephina. She, uh, she rushes to give you a hug. Aw, Killian hugs her back really tightly and steals all of her gold (laughs) (laughs) nah I'm I'm suspicious of Killian hugs now (laughs) (laughs) the missing fee to frame her later (laughs) (laughs) Um, greetings Miss Josephina she says uh, you got back early this morning then I didn't see you around in the night Uh, indeed we did well, uh, I'm glad you're all safe. I know the, the headmaster's been working hard to um, to find you guys. He even hired Harlan's heroes to go looking for you. Uh, yes, you must refer to the rangers. Uh, we met them at the top of the path below. Yeah, yeah, them. Oh, uh, Killian, now that you're here, um, there's a, a tree in your room um, that I noticed was growing and I started watering it but about a day or two ago it cracked out of the pot and I wasn't sure what you wanted to do with that oh don't worry I uh I dealt with it and now I gotta clean up all that dirt in there but it's all set oh thank you for watering it happy to I was worried something bad would happen to it I didn't want it to die but I I didn't want to just plant it without um Without your permission, I, I didn't know exactly what you had the intention of doing with it. Josephina has better relationship with Athar than Killian does for watering the plant. <laughs> <laughs> she yeah. actually gave Josephina is now a level her. 100 druid. <laughs> 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 but yeah, don't worry. It's it's where it should be. It's not in my room anymore. Uh, okay, I see. So I don't need to water it for you then. No, no, but thank you. Happy to help, dearie. Um, she sees that you kind of all have like finished up cleaning up breakfast and says, "Well, I suppose that uh, now that you're back, you have a lot to catch up on. So I'll, I'll leave you to it." Certainly. Uh, Croco. Thank you for everything. Take the plates. Uh, Thanks, so you guys bro. can spend today doing what you would like because you do have some time to yourselves. Hmm. Uh, so we can fast forward this hmm. day um, if you don't have anything that you particularly want to do. Uh, nothing RP, but I would like to first of all pray to Morningstar and I would probably do that at the same time that I'm doing my weapon bond for my longsword mm-hmm. um, so it's like a one hour ritual and yeah. if e- Esther wanted to hang out while I did that too yeah sure cool. she'll hang out mm, date shut up guys <laughs> we're just friends mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah I'm doing that um, Amelia mentions that she's going to go get her notes in order uh, that she prepared for you guys and then heads upstairs. Yeah, I'd just be like asking Esto like what happened during the last month and just stories like that. Um, she just tells you like various stories about um, ways that p- 
people, including herself, have embarrassed themselves at swordcraft class, dropping their swords and tripping. Nice. Uh, yo, what are you up to? I have no idea. That's okay. You can just hang out with another group, or you can uh, just relax. You can do drawings. You can do whatever you like. Just hang. I did want to do a drawing a day, but nothing. Nothing need to be RP'd or anything. Okay. Oh. I'm gonna finally um, have some time to write to. Since I haven't done that in like two months. <laughs> um, if Amelia's in the mood to share notes, I guess I'll do that with her and whoever else, you know, wants to try and catch up. Okay. Uh, so she she headed up. She's okay. Yeah, she headed upstairs. Um, I should get me, Wendy. I just. If you're going to help Amelia, Windermere will go with her. Okay. Sure. Um, Amelia has on her desk just stacks and stacks of various papers, um, and she's kind of sorting them out. And she'll uh, kind of pass you a pile from time to time, and uh, ask you to go through it and make sure that it's all the same school of magic and various things like that. Gotcha. And so you spend that time kind of helping her sort her notes. Um, they are very detailed, and she has very neat handwriting. <laughs> Amelia, you went above and beyond here. Mm -hmm. She's even done like little drawings of things too. Diagrams. Oh, wow. Uh, so, Croak, you spend that time uh, doing your weapon bond? Uh, yeah, so I can bond a two, but I only spent an hour, so I bonded to my longsword. Okay. Uh, then, yep, you can now consider that bonded to yours. Okay, cool. And Kenro, you spend that hour uh, attuning to your hat, and it is now attuned to you. Cool. What does the hat look like? Uh, it's a very traditional wizard's hat. Um, I'll get a picture for you next time. Like the one Mickey Mouse wears in Fantasia? Mm, not quite. It has like kind of a wide brim to it. Okay, cool. Uh, it's sort of a uh, solid so color it's, it's... with a buckle on it. Yes. Dumble, door, looking hat okay yeah. I'll, I'll add it to your inventory in between now and next session okay uh, with and the then, full description uh, of what it does how much how much rope between the two grappling hooks do i have uh let me I decide in, let me decide in between two sessions um, okay since we're almost to the end of this one anyway okay. so the school doesn't have a fletcher but like could killian like find someone that knows where one is and send him a letter to commission him to Yep, a, you could uh, send a letter, ask around. The, the smith might know. You could talk to the smith, maybe. Um, okay. Or even Destin and uh, the, the guards may know. Um, and then send a letter through the airy, if you wish. Yeah. Uh, do you want me to RP anything, or do you want me to just say what I uh, do? We can go past it. Just tell me kind of what you do in general. All right. Uh, Killing probably ran back to the school, bothered the guards to unlock the door, and asked Yeah, the... Destin was a little... <laughs> <laughs> less um polite with you but uh, he still let you in um and he, he followed you watching you the entire time yeah and so she asked the uh smith for the uh like a name or like an address to send the letter to um she directed you that there is a fletcher in shamport which is probably the closest one All right. uh so oh sorry the blacksmith directed you that there's a um fletcher in shamport and then uh gave you that address that you can send a letter to uh, right. so if you head on over to the airy um she's in there uh she's got a bit of a sniffle oh no but uh she usually has one because <laughs> the cold weather and uh she'll take your letter and say that she'll send it promptly awesome uh, um and are you just inquiring or are you trying to actually buy something uh actually buy something would be nice but yeah I want to actually buy some of them. There you go. Um, then I guess you can just send a shipment of gold if you have it. How much would a hand crossbow be? Uh, let me double check. Uh, uh, hand crossbow is... Um, let's go with 56. 56? Mm -hmm. Hmm. <laughs> 
I uh, hold on. Uh, Killian will see Crow quickly to ask for uh. All right, uh, you barge in <laughs> on this little um <laughs> get together here. Uh, greetings, Killian. Hey, um, uh, hold on, I need to do math in my head. Uh, okay. <laughs> Can I borrow 14 gold? Um, what do you need it for? Um, a hand crossbow. <laughs> oh, well, hmm. I suppose a ranged weapon would help, you being lightly armored and all. Uh, is this a loan, or do you just want me to give yeah, you Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'll, I'll pay you back. I'll pay you back. Uh, hang on. Actually, I got some here. Uh, why don't we split it, Armor Boy? Oh, well, you don't have to, but if you really want to, Esta, that would be appreciated. Um, so she'll hand you half that gold then. Um, and Esther says, ah, you ain't got to pay me back. It's not that much. It's like half my gold almost. <laughs> oh my if I paid the full thing. So, yeah, this is <laughs> very nice of Vesta. Yeah. Aw. Uh, well, thank you, you too. Don't worry, your money's gonna be put to good use and I'll pay you both back. <laughs> She's gonna lose the crossbow next session. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna, She's gonna it give it to some more Barklings. Hey, do you want a crossbow? <laughs> 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 Alright, uh, so after that, then you uh, you send kind of a, a larger envelope that uh, the woman at the Airy provides for you, Saldana, um, awesome. with the gold included, uh, requesting that they ship you a crossbow at the earliest convenience. Alien is now broke. Um, thank you. Alright, that's all Killian's gonna do other than clean up the dirt in her room. <laughs> yeah, true. Hot cards. Alright, uh, then you spend the rest of the day uh, much more peacefully than your past uh, month, I suppose. I'm... Uh, go ahead. I think I'm gonna go into the kitchen and help Josephine out, which is very uncharacteristic of me, but... Okay. Uh, she, yeah, she's, she was cleaning up breakfast, but after a while she finishes that. Um... And then she uh, eventually, throughout the day, begins to start to prep dinner, uh, which she will gladly uh, accept your help with. She hands you various uh, vegetables to chop. And he haphazardly chops them. So yeah, She tries to give you little bits of advice about how to hold the knife and how to, how to position your hand. Still, he haphazardly um, <laughs> chops the produce. All right. Um, eventually, this is the first time he's ever cooked. Okay. Of course, yeah. I, she just yeah. is trying to give you pointers. That doesn't mean that it's yeah. gonna fix anything. Um. Uh, which hand is he holding the produce with? It doesn't matter. <laughs> kind of does. The old creepy hand. <laughs> <laughs> He'd have to use his creepy hand. How do you chop? How do you like cut things with one hand? Well, you could hold the knife with one hand or the creepy hand, and then use your non-creepy hand to like hold the. Vegetable Unfortunately, I'm not left-handed. Oh God! Taint our food, right? Yeah. I tainted the food five hours ago, and you're gonna eat it, so. Yeah, there's just going to be a session down the line where Jay's like, all right, you guys are eating dinner. Make a wisdom saving. <laughs> You're all high as balls now. Gilly's <laughs> um, just cackling in the corner. I know. My cat, too. <laughs> so the uh, you spend the rest of the day with your various um, business that you have to Ow. attend to. Sorry. And um, before long, it comes to dinner time, and you eat another dinner together. Uh, over dinner, uh, Amelia explains the uh, lesson plan that she has set up for you guys. 
Um, and she says that y if you want to catch up, you're going to have to spend uh, both your evenings and your next weekend with her. I'll spend time with Amelia. Uh, in her little class mm -hmm. to do some extracurricular studying. Yeah, yeah. gotta catch up. <laughs> I was gonna say her full name, but I don't even know if anyone asked her last name before. Probably not. <laughs> We're bad about asking for first right. names. Amelia's uh, cram school. So she kind of, she like spends the entire time um, just talking endlessly about all her dis different lessons plans. Uh, and you, throughout, yeah, different people can tune in or out if they want to. Because mm -hmm. she just spends the entire time talking enthusiastically about classes. Wait, um, I know you told us but we still, I mean, we don't have the name tags for him, so it's what was Fairhurst. Esther's last name? Oh. Oh, you can't see that name for me? Wolf mm -hmm. Daughter. Oh, I'm I just can't reading see the characters in our journal. Uh, oh, yeah, I always forget about the journal. Me too. Oh, yeah, Fairhurst. I don't know if we asked for it, but we can see it. Amelia's. Oh, man. And everybody else's Let last name. Let me figure that out right now. I think it's just a problem here. Yeah, we just like remember their names because we talk uh, to them so often. Roll20 has mm -hmm. altered their setup slightly, so it might be something to do with that because there used to be a checkbox that I'd have checked for everybody to see that. But... Oh, so uh, the way you see those three dots with the circle in it, you hover over that and it says C, and that's how you do it now. Hmm. When, when If you double click on the token, there's like a circle above each little area. And it's got three dots on it. You just hover over that, and that gives you the option for us to see it. Ah, that's hidden because I have dark mode on. Gotcha. <laughs> so it's like yeah, no, they barely visible for me. That's why I didn't see it. Yep, yep. Thank you. Oh, nice save. Mm -hmm. All right, you can see that now, right? Yep. Perfect. Yeah, I can see Estes. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. I, I believe Windermere told me her last name. Oh uh, yeah, I have, I have her yeah. last name in my notes. Their families has the was it the place in the Feywild named after them? Uh, the Feylands, which is a not, it's not like yeah, it's yeah. not the Feywild. It's a different thing. I get the confusion would, though. Yeah, it's just a slip of the tongue. Yeah, no, I, I've probably done that before too. Um, yeah, the, the she talked about in the past the Kahani tar pits. Yeah, because I remember her vision was like it was covered in tar and stuff like that. Actually, now that you mentioned that, the imp itself kind of looks like it's almost made of tar. Mm -hmm. I should have mentioned that, but I forgot earlier. Ah, we gotta do that side quest at some point when we're too cool <laughs> to have some tragic shit happen to her family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you spend the rest of the day eating, and then head off to bed. Um, so if everybody is nothing else that they want to do, then I suppose this is a good spot to end the session, even though it's five minutes early, just because we'll start next session with the beginning of the day. Yeah. But we still got five minutes, so if you want to do anything else, you want to talk about anything else, ask anybody about something. You got a couple of seconds. Well, I'll just bid Esther good night. All right. Uh, she will Good night, Esther. It was. It's uh, morning. Get... No, it's nighttime Wait. now. Yeah, oh, we, we, we went <laughs> through the day. We went through oh, an no, entire day just <laughs> fast forwarded, letting you guys take care of various businesses. Um, and then you really ate dinner, and now we're heading off to bed. <laughs> <laughs> the temporal distortion is still affecting Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Esther wishes you a uh, good night as well and says, uh, Well, <laughs> I'm glad you're back. Indeed, it's good to be back. I'll give her a salute. Uh, she gives you the same sort of incorrect salute and says, Yeah, Swordcraft class, Swordcraft class was not nearly as exciting without you, so. 
No, I look forward to meeting with Sword Gang again. Yeah, Sword Gang. Well, you have a good night. You too. Uh, Crook will say a prayer to Hana before going to bed. Okay. Uh, any other business anyone else wants to take care of before we move into classes again? Nope. I can think of. Uh -uh. Alright. Then that's where we'll end this session because it's too perfect of a time to not. <laughs> hmm. I'm so happy to be out of that freaking hole. No kidding. God, that was scary. Yeah. Yeah, there was some real yeah. catharsis in that session. <laughs> <laughs> I actually feel like like an anxiety's been lifted, like whenever we got back on the dorm map. Like just seeing Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the manipulation of that song. That's my intention. <laughs> I, like seriously like <laughs> that it's a, it's a good song and like we always have our dinners there you know just pleasant music like chill rp like it's, it's so good it's good you feel that way because that is 100 percent exactly how i planned it and i was trying to give you that feeling so well done. now something bad's gonna happen in the dorms one day yeah we're i'm not gonna, gonna burn it to the it. ground we're gonna wake up and it's gonna be on fire <laughs> dude if you play that music while you do that i will have a crisis <laughs> Forever for you. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Those damn rangers are badass though, huh? Mm hmm. Yeah. Dude, uh, I recognize Lavender's token. Uh, whenever she came up, I was like, oh, I want to fanboy over her, but I got to. <laughs> Talk to her in character. Isn't that what Progue does anyways? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not mm. too far off. Mm, yeah, Fair so that enough. is that is the division known as Harlan's Heroes. A lot of them have little nicknames um, to help people remember them. <laughs> um, that's Harlan he Harlan's Heroes. They've, uh, they've showed up in other campaigns um, and had impacts on a lot of different campaigns. But uh, that is the full division, which I don't think a single group has seen all of them yet. Oh, cool. Oh, okay. That's the whole gang. Yeah, they're definitely uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool guys. I'm just happy. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I was I would cry if killing and died. <laughs> I'm not I'm not ready to lose her. Yeah, I don't have any backups like Croak does, so Right. <laughs> um, to be fair, like several of my backups have gone to other games, so That's uh, true. I have Tap Tap, the uh Kinku Rogue oh, and yeah. Blizzaga the uh Tempest Cleric of Braskia. Mm, I did want to. I did want to discuss that with you because uh, that's not. That's not quite the right domain. Okay, I would definitely be willing to change it to suit that because um, Braskia is super interesting. Yeah, it might not work because of um, you needing my stuff and having to create it through me. Um, with the homebrew stuff, right? Because I believe the cold domain is um, maybe not available to you um without making oh, them yeah. through me right um but i get why you pick tempest but tempest is more of a um you know that other lady that uh, yeah one winged angel if you will yeah literally the only reason i took it is because i saw you get um what is it like ice like sleet storm ice storm some shit like that later mm -hmm. on down the line yeah um yeah it makes sense that you picked it but um that one typically goes towards redacting. Yeah. Redacted. It's not actually really that redacted. Um, she's on the world info, and you can go read about her. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, Vraski would be probably a different domain. 
Uh, if you would be willing to change that to cold for me at some point, uh, uh, I just can't, so I can look at it. I can't edit your uh, ones that you don't make in my campaign. They're oh, yeah. read only, yeah. So, um, if you would like, I've been thinking about doing this, uh, making like a um, placeholder empty campaign where just everybody can make characters in it um, mm -hmm. as like backups because. I have lots of people always wanting to do that, where they're like, oh, I want to make this character for this world, but then they can't pick any of like the homebrew stuff. Oh, I don't have ne Neon Hari and stuff like that. Um, so I might just make like an Dude. empty one and then just give the link around to the people I play with to just make various Ooh. backups with the That'd homebrew stuff. Because yeah. it's a request I've gotten more than once, so maybe I'll do that. It mm -hmm. won't be a, like an actual campaign, but um, it'll just be like a placeholder thing where you can build a bunch of characters. Oh yeah, that's what um, Jeff did for his game. Yeah, cool. yeah, but I did I did mine more because I had over seven hundred character sheets and it was lagging the game. Um, <laughs> but so if you end up going pro version, which is obviously I think you're on plus version right now. Are you talking about World Twenty? Yeah. Mm, I was talking about a uh, D and D Beyond. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I was gonna say just yeah. yeah never mind then. But yeah, that's what I did on mine. I had to make an entire different game just for all the character sheets and all the old old characters and dead characters and blah blah blah. Yeah, I'd definitely appreciate uh, an empty campaign just to mess around mm -hmm. with character creation. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll throw that together then, because that'd be cool. And then I can I can edit anything that you can't still see. So. All right. Um, I will let me make a note. Um, can route hat. I'll add that. I don't add them so you know what they do because they would just tell you what they do. Um, so now that you know what it does and are attuned to it, I'll add it and I'll attune it for you. Cute. Um, so that'll be on your D and D Beyond sheet, um, and then you can read exactly what that description is, and if you want to make your own little thing for it elsewhere. Yeah, I still gotta level up my character. I found out so. True. Yeah, you were the only one who didn't level, but um, we don't use that as much of a reference, so it's fine. Well, I mean, I didn't level up on like either D and D Beyond mm -hmm. or. Okay. Yeah. Then make, sure, make sure you do that then. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, made a custom item for that spider medicine stuff. Hmm, nice. Um, I'll take a look at that because I can adjust it slightly if I want to oh. make it say something specific. But um, yeah, I literally that's... didn't put anything besides the name and just to remind myself that I have it. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll take a look at that too. Then I'll make a note. Cool. Uh, I was also gonna. Um, do you have the list? Did I I told you exactly what the patches on your cloak were. Yes, I do. One sec. Um, just send it to me on Discord and I'll, I'll make up the item for you because I want to make sure that I have everything that I told you it did on there. Because uh, it is a slightly, it's it's based on a real D&D &D item, but it's altered a bit. So um, gotcha. that's why I don't want to just give you the, the normal one because it'll tell you the wrong thing. Um, so Yo's bottle and... All right, I got my list of things to do. I think that's all. Oh, I mean, actually, I'll do the. Oh no, you get you gotta get rid of that. Never mind. All right, perfect. Um, so if those who are still in chat who are watching, thank you for watching. I saw a couple new faces in here, um, which is nice. I'm glad that it seems like they enjoyed their time here. Uh, so. Vod watchers as well. Thank you for watching. Um, this was a little more relaxing than the usual session, um, but uh, I think they needed that. <laughs> um, and it's good to do a little bit of RP in between to try to build some character stuff. So thank you for watching. Um, the next session that will be going on is another Hearth and Home on Tuesday. And that'll be at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, they just got done fighting some bugs. <laughs> um, and are, <laughs> I think two of them are poisoned. So that'll be sticking with them. Oh, wait. And, Sorry uh, about that. I was talking to myself. No worries. 
Uh, yeah, so two of them are poisoned, and they are in the middle of the wild woods, which is typically not a good place to be, uh, on the hunt for the missing Adelaide, who uh, is the, I, I guess, quote-unquote love interest of the giant minotaur woman. Yeah, they also released a demon. What the hell is that about, Hearth and Hall? Oh, yeah, they also, if you go back and watch that session, released a um, a devil who called himself the Prince of Chain. I wonder if that'll have any lasting consequences for anybody in the living world. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say, for those of you who are creating characters, um, if you are making specifically a Pact of the Chain Warlock, um, he is a patron now. Do Potter's... all all characters we make for your game have to be magically inclined in some way? Um, for this specific campaign, probably, unless you can come up with a really interesting reason as to why they are not. What if, like, maybe they're a guard at the school who just enjoys hanging out with the party for some reason or another? Backstory reasons can explain that? Yeah, uh, that could potentially work. We'd have to kind of workshop it a little bit, but um, that's okay. that's for another time. Okay, ideas for later. Yeah, of course. Um, so yeah, Pact to the Chain Warlocks hit up the Prince of Chains for some boons. <laughs> or don't. He's a creepy looking dude. <laughs> yeah, he was rather intense. The voice was really good for him, too. Do I have him? Where is he? Let's see if we can look at him for a second. Actually, never mind. Let's not. Yeah, don't don't leave me with a parting devil voice. I want to have this nice, peaceful. Oh, I wasn't like... gonna talk as him. You gotta wait till okay. he shows up to talk as him. Good. I gotta use that voice very sparingly because it's a effective one. Indeed. Mm -hmm. um, did we have any art? Oh, we had the <laughs> pointer and ring movie poster from the last. If you're okay with me showing that. Oh God. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> is it is a slight shit post, but that's okay. <laughs> it's a big shit post. <laughs> shit posts are fine. Um, <laughs> it's about the um little good cop bad cop routine that um, Ender and Proudpool from the Friday sessions, uh, Fresh Meat in Prison Streets. They were doing a little bit of a good cop bad cop to some merchants in the markets. <laughs> Uh, and those are their nicknames that they're using to refer to each other, Pointer and Ring, as they are the brass hand. Uh, uh, so this is their movie poster <laughs> for their uh, buddy cop movie, in which they just go around harassing merchants. Okay, I uh, get it now. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go, guys. Thank you. Yep, take care. Oh, yep, bye. Later. Yeah, you guys can head out whenever you like. I'm just talking. Yeah, just chilling. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Not gonna lie, I looked at that picture for a while and like I don't get it, but now that you explained it, I get <laughs> yeah, it. It's get the it kind of thing where unless you watch that session, it would make absolutely no sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very specific reference. Even the the sponsored by Perry's berries is a pull too. <laughs> it's a little love letter to fresh meat. Yeah, it's uh -huh. great. It's great. It's hilarious. So. <laughs> Even included his full name there. As a <laughs> yeah. Some killer Photoshop work there too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not bad actually. Listen, I mean, for a, for a ship post, it's pretty good. No. Yeah. You gotta put in minimal effort to make yeah. The shit if, post if if this that's why that's what, well that's why I said it's like sort of a shit post because if this was a true shit post it would have just been like a um like a a stock photo of like a fish for proud pool <laughs> with like the watermark <laughs> still on it. Dude, I so, okay. So I was looking for like hair with transparent backgrounds. The beard, easy. I found like so many beards. I had to decide which <laughs> one I wanted to use. The yeah. hair for proud pool was so difficult. Huh. Like, trying to find, like, his actual, you know, it kind of, like, swoops back. And I think he might even have it, like, like braided or tied or whatever. 
so hard, dude. I just found like this kind of poofy woman's blonde <laughs> hair, is he, and then just okay. changed the colors until he's, it was blue. He's gone, guys. But um, between you and me and all of chat, and if you watch this the end of this vod, um, that uh, portrait that he picked was originally intentioned to be a girl. <laughs> <laughs> No wonder I'm so confused by it. Man, um, I <laughs> the uh, the art that he's using was actually intention to be a female character, but it is actually pretty androgynous, so I think it works. Yeah, it is. For I sure. thought at first it was a girl. Me too. I, I like, stumbled I stumbled across it when I was looking for other portraits, and uh, <laughs> it was originally made for a female character, <laughs> which made me laugh. But I, I, it's become Proud Pool, so I can't see it as anything but him now. <laughs> I don't know, man. That new that new lore's canon for me now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, nobody tell him. Everybody shh. <laughs> I don't want to change his perception of his own character. <laughs> I can't picture the character looking any other way now. Yeah, it's proud mm. to me and it'll always be proud to me. <laughs> <clears throat> I liked that part of this session when they just all popped in <laughs> talking about Duna coins. Dude, I literally did not hear anyone say coins. And then I just look at chat, they're all coins, coins, eyes, coins. Alright guys, I'm going to head off. Later. Coins. See you later. later, man. Yeah, they all just, they all just like teleported in and uh, <laughs> started talking about Duna coins. Uh... Shinx, do you, do you know that reference that we're talking about? No. no. no? Okay, so in the in uh, the Fresh Meat in Prison Streets campaign, mm -hmm. um, one of their kind of random encounters that, that I roll when they take long distance travel, um, they rolled uh, an encounter with a mysterious merchant um, who, if you're still in roll 20, I'll just drag his portrait so you can see it. Um looks like this okay um and Ooh. he uh introduced himself as duna and explained that uh he's looking for coins um coins that don't look like the normal kind of currency the gold silver and copper pieces coins that have like um runes on them uh, and he said that if no? you if you find any then um you can give them to him and he'll give you a reward for it Okay. And uh, they asked him what kind of reward, and he said that not even he knows what, what the reward will be. <laughs> okay. Um, that he can't predict it, is what he said. Cool. So uh, that was what that was in reference to. Whenever they're talking about Duna, they've nicknamed them Duna coins, even though that's not my, my term for them that I've written. Um, but it's kind of just become Duna coins now. Dude, you, you really got to bait them, like, during a session, be like, you notice a shiny coin in the corner, and they go over to check it out, and you're like, it's one silver. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad, because they're so obsessed with it now. Really? Um, I don't blame them, because I, I do love Zuna and everything about him. Um, but um, <laughs> they are very fixated on it. <laughs> yeah, got to figure out what the hell you're going to get. Yeah, RNG is the best. Mm, he, he told them that um, if they ever find one, then he'll probably bump into them again in the future. Okay. Mm. Um, he was mysterious. He had an echoey voice. Ever so slightly creepy. But, um, yeah, so that was, that was that reference. If you see people talking about Duna, they're talking about that. <laughs> I was wondering. I thought it was in like uh, some other form of media that I never saw. Mm, no, that was from their uh, one of their more recent sessions. Not not sense. the most recent one, but the one before that. Okay. Yeah, we out here making Grand Lorian references, bro. Yeah, we got our own memes. I missed the last two weeks of games. Mm, yeah, so you missed the Prince of Chains too, huh? Yep. <laughs> but yeah. Watch them. They're good. There's my boy. Oh, shit. Good lord. They um, ran into uh. a a scarecrow in a farm field that began talking to them. Um, and asked them to... So, did he what? look like that 
he was a scarecrow. No, he looked like a, a very normal scarecrow. Well, a little creepy, okay. but... Uh, okay. They were creeped out by it just because it was a scarecrow. But a demon, that's fine. <laughs> um, It was a scarecrow that was standing in a field that had a sword pushed through its chest. Um, oh. And he asked them to... Uh, take it out and they agreed to do it if uh he gave them information because he'd seen what happened to the woman that they were trying to find and he said sure i'll tell you what happened just take this sword out uh, and so they did it and then he transformed into that um, and told them that uh, uh he told them what they wanted to know and said um, that they were uh, service for a service is what they had done, uh, which he considers a pact. Um, and then uh, he said that uh, he would give them a reward for saving him, um, but that he wasn't going to give them to them to them right then. And instead, he would show up in their hour of most need and give them their present. Um. And then he disappeared with a bow. Mm -mm. So we'll see if anything yeah. ever comes of that. Surely nothing bad, right? No, <laughs> sure. Surely. He's just gonna, he's gonna have a little, little nice bow and he'll give them this gift. <laughs> a little birthday cake and everything. Mm. Cheer him on. A mashing X right now. <laughs> <laughs> to doubt. Yeah. Let's see. <clears throat> So yeah, that's that's the play-by-play -play on what what the other campaigns have been doing. <laughs> um, but again, for VOD watchers or people who are still lingering in chat, if there are any, um, Hearth and Home, Tuesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, this group will always be Sundays at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. And then the Fresh Meat, which is the pirate uh, prison escapee adventure group. <laughs> Um, on the coast, the tropical coast. Uh, they are Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern, so you can tune into those various sessions. If you want to know what happened previously, you can watch the VODs here on the Twitch channel, or you can go to the YouTube channel, which is linked below uh, in the description of my Twitch, uh, where I've saved all the VODs because they do disappear from the Twitch channel after some time, uh, about 15 days. So if it's not on the Twitch channel, it'll be on that YouTube channel so you can go back and watch them there um there's a couple highlights I, did i highlight something i think i highlighted something since i've last played i know i i know i highlighted the uh hearth and home group running into the prince of chains so that's a little like i don't know five minute long video if you want to go watch that hmm. if you want to see their actual encounter with him Oh yeah, see that the party makes a new friend. Yeah, smile. <laughs> smile. Um, but other than that, thanks for watching chat. Thanks for playing players. You guys have a good night. See you on Tuesday. Yep. Great session. Everyone have a Yay. good night.